My story is from when I was growing up at my parents' house in Burton, Michigan. Since I was about seven or eight, all the way up until I moved out, I witnessed several odd occurrences. My dad was an over-the-road truck driver, so I was home with my mom most of the time. Weird things that have happened include tapping on the walls, voices, being touched, feeling like you're being watched, and even a full-on person that disappeared in front of me. There have been several instances where I, and my friends who I have never told this to, have heard chunks of conversation coming from other rooms or downstairs. When I went to investigate, it would immediately stop. I was home alone, the TV was off, and the windows were closed. There have been a few other events, such as tapping on walls, doors shutting, and very clear footsteps walking along the hardwood floors. Once, they even went past me so close that I could feel it in the floorboards. The creepiest thing was one day a friend and I were down in the basement, which consisted of a large family room, a laundry room, and my dad's workout room. The door to the workout room did not have a doorknob since they were refinishing the house. There was only a hole in the door for one. I don't remember why, but my friend and I looked through the hole and clearly saw a man sitting on a weight bench. She thought it was my dad. We didn't think anything of it until shortly after at dinner when I asked my dad why he wasn't at the table. I then learned that he was a few states away out on the road still. I had thought he came home. I told my mom and she immediately called the police thinking that there should have been someone in the house. She said she heard commotion in that room earlier in the day but she thought it was us. There was no sign of anyone being in there. Another creepy thing happened in the basement. Some friends and I were in the family room playing Nintendo 64, and clear as day, a man walked right past the double sliding laundry room doors. The room is like 30 by 8 and has a set of the bifold closet doors as an entrance. Almost all of my friends saw this. The man walked past, and right before he was out of sight, turned toward the wall and made a motion like he was opening a refrigerator door and putting something in. He then walked out of sight. We went in there to see who the hell it was and there was nobody there. I've been living on the other side of the state for three years, but my mom still lives there and is most of the time alone with the dog since my dad is still on the road a lot. She says that she still hears the conversations and the footsteps quite often and has seen the guy in the basement twice. I'm skeptical, but honestly, I don't know what to make of it. There have been multiple witnesses, and I've tried to debunk everything, but I just don't know how to explain it. A few weeks ago, I was talking to my mom. It was a Monday night, and she looked pretty tired, so I asked her what was up. She told me that the night before, at about 5 in the morning, she was woken by the sensation of being watched. She had her back to the wall, but she felt as though someone was behind her, laying in the bed with her. She felt a cold chill and was paralyzed with fear. After a few minutes, she finally convinced herself to look. Of course, there was nothing there, but it took her quite a while to fall back asleep. The funny thing is, at the same time in my room in the basement, which is nowhere near her, so her moving would not have woken me up, I was awoken by a sound, so I sat up to look, and there was a man standing at the end of my bed. Of course, it scared me so much, within a second I flung my covers off to sit up, but he was gone. There's a chair at the end of my bed, with no space to stand, and he couldn't have been that tall while sitting. We were both spooked. Today, I was sitting alone in my basement working on homework, and someone ran their fingers through my hair. I'm pretty sure our house is haunted. I grew up in several haunted houses. 
Even now, we have an entity in our kitchen who we jokingly call the fridge ghost, as it likes to hang out by the fridge and occasionally open it in the middle of the night. But for now, I'm going to talk about a house I lived in until middle school. It's located on a street called Cherry, which my friends and I always joked about for obvious reasons. However, nothing about the feeling I had when I lived in that house with my family was anything to joke about. My friends never wanted to spend the night at the house I grew up in. All of them had the same bad feeling staying there. The sinking feeling that formed in the pit of their stomachs before something would happen. And unusual things inevitably would, more often than not. Doors would regularly open and close on their own. And this was something that I chalked up to the tilt in the foundation, at least at first. But when you hear your doors, cabinets, doors leading to the house, essentially anything with a hinge, slam in the middle of the night, you start to question if it's just regular house noises. The windows would open and shut on their own as well, which is a little harder to pin on a shifting foundation. There were a couple of times that the televisions would turn on and off on their own. Sometimes the volume on the TV sets would go up and down as well. And there were other times the channels would show up on the television sets that I've never seen. I could probably blame the odd television behavior on magnetism or the fact that both television sets were quite old. However, the strange things I would see on those off channels through the static are enough to convince me that there might have been something else going on there. I would often hear noises in the vents, like things were crawling around in them. Sometimes it sounded like bodies were being dragged through the ventilation shafts. Sometimes I would hear scratching on the walls or the windows or other out of the ordinary sounds like footsteps on the floor when no one else was there. My mom used to tell me that it was little woodland creatures who got into the insides of the walls, but I never saw these animals. The closest I came to seeing anything close to that was one family of skunks we found living under our porch. But after moving them out safely to the woods, we never saw any other animals that could account for making the types of noises I was hearing. Sometimes I heard whispering, and other times I heard yelling, like a faint cry through the walls. There were other times I would find weird yellow liquid on the walls or other similar substances. My mom used to tell me it was mold and not to touch it until she could clean it. But it didn't look like any mold I've ever seen. It didn't look like any of those substances could be made by anything living. I would also see ghostly figures wandering through the house. When I was young, I used to talk in great detail with what I think was a child female entity. It was more like a one-way conversation with the entity, although sometimes it would answer in its own way. I wrote an essay about my friendship with that ghost for one of my classes later on and submitted it as fiction so the teacher wouldn't think I was crazy. But the truth is that my friendship with that ghost and some of the other presences was very real. Of course, there was the typical haunting stuff too. Objects being thrown, pulled, or just simply going missing altogether. I used to joke with my mom that the wall trolls or house gnomes had made off with our stuff, to which she would just roll her eyes. When my mom started seeing some strange entities peering at us through the windows or as we were sleeping, she started to take my stories a little more seriously. She won't agree with everything I have claimed to see in that house, but she will definitely admit that there were presences that would appear. I often saw toys come to life, including a doll my aunt had brought me back from Russia. I had a dream that the doll was trying to kill me by choking me to death. When I woke up, the doll was sleeping next to me in my bed. No one had ever moved it there that night. I ended up blessing the doll and throwing it away. To this day, I don't like dolls and I won't sleep in the same room with one. I remember that the landlord who lived in the house next door was always asking us how things were going there. My mom told me to keep quiet about the things we saw because the rent was cheap and she didn't want to upset her. But even though I never got any direct answers from the landlord, I could see by her behavior that she must have known something was off with the house. 
Perhaps the strangest thing was that the house didn't particularly have a dark past or a history attached that would make it stand out as a hub for spiritual activity. The landlord was cranky and her attitude could have contributed to the overall negative energy. But other than that, we never knew what in particular made the house so haunted. I didn't exclusively see evil entities in the house either. Like I said, I made some friendships with the ghosts. And I even saw other entities, what I can only describe to be little people and entities that looked like what people say greys are, but they weren't aliens. This leads me to believe that the house was built on top of some kind of ley line or portal that opened up into other realms. Maybe instead of a haunted house, we just had a house with the gateway. I'm not sorry that I had the experiences that I did. In fact, I think it broadened my horizons and showed me from an early age that there's more to the world than what we can physically see. I will always think of the friendships I formed with the spirits and other entities fondly. For some people, my experience might have a rational explanation, and that's fine. I've always had an open mind, and I'm happy to listen to many sides of an argument. But for me, the experiences I had in this house growing up were tangible, and not just the imagination of an elementary school kid. They are something that has colored my view of this beautiful and mysterious world, and has opened my eyes to all kinds of realms of possibility. I've had some crazy things happen to me at my house. My neighborhood sits on top of a Native American burial ground. There are even some ruins and a burial mound in my friend's backyard, literally. Also, there was a revolutionary war battle about a mile down the street. Fun stuff, right? Ever since I moved into that house with my parents about 13 years ago, I was four. My little brother was around one. Now I'm 17 and he's 14. A lot has happened. My brother, who was six at the time of this story, used to run around the house claiming to be chased by a monster. My mom and I were sitting on the couch one day and he was standing in front of the TV, but then he started shaking and ran to my mom and sat on her lap. He said that a lady tapped him on the shoulder and asked if she could speak with his father. You could bet my mom picked up both of us like footballs, got in the car as fast as possible and went to my grandma's. For the longest time after that, though, things have been quiet. Something happened, it was very minor. Within the last five years, however, things have really kicked up again. For example, once I was standing in the kitchen at around age 13, I was staring out the window and I heard my name whispered in my ear really softly. I remember saying, yeah, mom, only to look and see her fast asleep on the couch in the next room. Another time at around three in the afternoon, while I was home alone with my brother who was napping upstairs, I heard a knock on the door and a couple of kids giggle pretty loudly. I answered the door right away, too fast for them to have run off, but no one was there. My mom heard a loud crash once and a little kid giggle while in the living room. She ran into the kitchen to call my dad and tell him about it. While she was in the kitchen, the garbage can lid started swinging. My dad, who's never experienced anything paranormal until last month, was working in the garage. The cap that keeps the air inside of a bike was thrown at him from across the room. I don't know why all of a sudden these things just started happening, out of nowhere after all these years of silence. My mom runs around the house with holy water after every experience because she's scared that it's going to hurt someone. I kind of doubt that, it's never hurt anybody before. It's only given us inconveniences and scared us, but I guess anything is possible. Does anyone have any explanation? As a kid, I was a huge fan of the paranormal, mostly due to my love for movies like Ghostbusters, but never in my life did I think that I would live in an actual haunted house, or in my case, a haunted mobile home. This all started when I was around four years old. We lived in a pretty nice mobile home. Growing up, my aunt would babysit us, as both of my parents worked crazy hours to support our family of five. Before we went to sleep, my aunt had a habit of telling us ghost stories. 
One night, as my paternal grandmother was visiting from Puerto Rico, my parents moved my twin and I to the living room as my grandmother claimed our room for the night. I was already creeped out about sleeping in the living room, which was pitch black. What made it worse was that they decided to put the cup with my grandmother's dentures next to the sofa. Having a very overactive imagination, I started to scare myself with ideas of what those teeth could do to me in the night. I struggled to go to sleep as my youngest sister, who was about three months old, was getting fussy and not wanting to sleep herself. On what took my mom a while, she finally got my sister to sleep before 10 p.m. I was relieved, and then I went back to trying to get some sleep myself. As the night progressed, I was sound asleep until I was awoken by the noise. I didn't know what it was at first, and then I realized it was a girl laughing. Scared out of my wits, I hid under the blanket. I heard the laughing get louder and closer. I shook in fear and attempted to look up, but I heard the girl run away from me and start running all over the living room and into my baby sister's room. It was then that I heard my baby sister crying hysterically. I heard the laugh through all of the crying. I just laid on the sofa, trembling in fear as I heard both the laughter and the crying. Merged together, it was truly eerie. A few moments later, I heard running, and this time it was my mom getting up to get my sister and take her to the master bedroom on the other side of the trailer. I don't know how I did it, but I did manage to go back to sleep. The following morning, I asked my mom about it, and she told me she was getting that trailer blessed by a priest. A priest did come, and all of the activity stopped, or so we thought. After the first incident, I started elementary school. I became a very avid reader, as my now late maternal grandfather had gotten us to start reading at a very young age. I would read books on ghosts every chance I had, which I actually still do. Nearly two years after my first encounter with the ghost, my little brother was born. Everything had been okay, and that's when it started again. Around this time, I wasn't sleeping in the living room, but I could still hear the running from my bedroom. The reason being that the nursery was in the room next to the room that I shared with my twin. I started sleeping with the radio on just so I could avoid hearing that ghost running and laughing. One day, I was told to shower, as I had gotten pretty dirty from jumping into all the puddles outside. I heard my mom say that she was taking my siblings with her to the store and she'd be right back. The store was just two blocks away, so I figured it would be about 10 to 15 minutes to shower. I was singing in the shower, and then I heard that laugh. It scared me, as I had only ever heard that laugh at night and when one of my siblings was around. I immediately shut off the water, got a towel, and went for the doorknob. I kept trying to open the door, but I couldn't. It was jammed. I started crying, and the ghost started pounding on the door and laughing at me. It seemed to have gone on for a while, until, as suddenly as it started, it stopped. I then heard my mom call my name. She very easily opened the door and saw me on the ground sobbing. I had told her what happened, and she yet again called another priest to come and bless the trailer. Nothing happened there after that last blessing, since we moved about six months later. I don't know what's going on there now, though. The whole experience is a big reason that I usually shower with my door open halfway now. I also recently looked up the history of that neighborhood. As typical as it sounds, it seems that the area where I lived was at one point a makeshift cemetery before our city had an official cemetery. Our trailer had been positioned on top of the grave of a little girl. The whole neighborhood is known for a lot of hauntings. Sometimes I wonder if they removed the bodies or not, but I'll never know as it seems the trailer I lived in was moved and it's now a garden and parking spot for a house that was built on the lot next door. So, a few months back, I moved into this beautiful two-story house with my mother, and we had a roommate with two kids in a great neighborhood. The price was suspiciously cheap, but at the time, we didn't think twice about the price. Anyway, the first night was a little creepy. 
I thought I heard footsteps coming up the stairs. My mom was close to the stairs on the second floor, so I always heard who comes up and down, but I just dismissed it, thinking it was just the house settling, as they say. Plus, I thought to myself, people always get a creepy vibe the first night they move into a new place, right? So after a few tosses and turns, I eventually fell asleep. Now, this was the first night, and the next encounter didn't happen for a few weeks, but this definitely got everyone in the house spooked. That night after work, I came home, happy that I had the next day off. So as soon as I got home, I got ready to play a game. As I sat down, I felt this presence in the room. But it was only me, and it literally felt like something evil was looking directly at me. I felt drained, but at the time, I didn't think much of it. Looking back on it now, it was almost like something was stealing my energy or feeding off of it. But as normal, I dismissed it and went to go ask my roommate if she wanted to smoke, and she said yes. So we went outside and we were talking for a good bit. But out of nowhere, she brought up how she felt about the house. Then she told me what happened to her earlier that day. She told me that when she came outside to smoke as she was sitting on the stairs, which is where we always smoked, she happened to turn and she saw the blinds from our living room open. She saw a figure looking directly at her, but when she turned to get a better look, it vanished. She said she didn't go back into the house for a few hours, but when she did, nothing was there. To me, it seemed like nothing. I honestly thought she was just seeing things, but we both felt like there was always something watching us. This is when things get a little scary. About a week or two passed and my roommate and I were down in the basement smoking because it was snowing outside. We finished up and then her two kids wanted to play, so we both stayed downstairs and watched the kids play. We were sitting a good bit away from the stairs when we saw her youngest son look up the stairs. The creepy thing is the way he turned and made it look like somebody had called him. Mind you, we were both looking at him at this time, so when he turns, he then slowly looks up the stairs as if he was trying to make out what he was looking at. As soon as his head stops, I'm assuming that's when he saw whatever it was he saw, and he started crying, like literally bawling. When his mother called his name, he just smiled and ran towards her. From our point of view, we couldn't see up the stairs because there was a wall covering it, but we know he saw something. That's when we knew the house was probably haunted. Since she was home more than I was, and more than my mother was, she had stories about doors being opened that were originally closed. You know, the normal haunting stories. But now we started to believe her even more. My mother said she started to feel depressed whenever she got home. This was the scariest thing that happened to me personally. We were moving, and at first everything was going smoothly. I was packing up the living room, and my mother was packing up her room. The roommate had already moved out, so it was just the two of us. After a few minutes of moving, I heard a loud bang. It was as if a bowling ball had fallen off of a countertop. It came from upstairs. So I went to go check it out. Nothing fell. Nothing was on the ground anywhere. My mom and I were pretty spooked, so we left to get some extra boxes and then we came back. When we got back, it was nighttime, and I went upstairs to pack up the kitchen. As I was doing so, I heard this loud, demonic screeching sound. I know it sounds far-fetched, but it's true. At the time, I didn't think much of it. In my head, I knew it came from in the area I was in, but when you're in a situation like that, sometimes defenses take over and you just try to brush it off. So I brushed it off. Thought it was just a car from outside that had a bad break or had to break hard. Anything other than what I'd actually heard. I proceeded to pack the kitchen. When I opened the cabinet, I heard the loud bang again. So I looked around, and then I looked back into the cabinet, proceeding to close it and run downstairs. Literally nothing had fallen in that room. I was running downstairs when I heard the screech again, but this time it came from inside the cabinet. I was still close enough to tell. 
It was almost like I felt a gust of wind blow past my head at that point. And I swear it felt like something went through my forehead. It felt like a punch. It wasn't like a fist punch, but like an energetic punch. It didn't hurt, it was more like a force that went through my body that I could physically feel. I booked it downstairs and told my mom what happened. Needless to say, we moved a lot faster than expected. If anyone has any experience with this stuff, please tell me what really happened to us. I always find it kind of odd, ghosts and demons and stuff like that, but maybe they are real. Something clearly was going on at that house. I just wish I knew what it was. I've had many paranormal experiences, but I thought I'd share this one in particular. My mother-in-law died quite unexpectedly during Christmas in 2013. She was in a coma for about a week before she died. She lived in a senior living community in Southern California called Laguna Woods. While my mother-in-law was in the hospital and following her death, my husband, one-year-old son and I stayed at her place. At the time, we lived in Texas, but were from Southern California, and all of our family are here too. One of my first experiences was in the middle of the night. I picked up my son out of his pack and play because he was crying. I held him as I walked to the living room to sit on the recliner and rock him. I didn't turn on any lights, as there was enough ambient light to see. Just as I was about to sit on the recliner, I was startled, because it looked like someone was already sitting there. I immediately stood back up because of my natural reaction of thinking somebody was already there. It sure did give my heart a jump. From about then on, I felt a presence. It didn't scare me, but I was definitely aware of it. I don't believe it was my mother-in-law. I believe it may have been a previous owner. I felt that it was probably a woman, but sometimes it felt like a man. So my mother-in-law's death brought together some of my husband's family who had been estranged. My husband's uncle has an adult son with whom they had a falling out for several years. Word of my mother-in-law's passing got to the estranged son, which is a cousin of my husband, and he showed up at the memorial and surprised his family. They had a positive and emotional reunion. He only stayed for the memorial and then left for home. After the memorial, my husband's side of the family and I went back to my mother-in-law's house for an after-party visit sort of thing. They stayed for several hours and it was a great reunion. We ordered pizza and I called my sister who lived in the neighborhood to come over. She came and socialized and it was nice. Nothing remarkable happened until the next day. So my sister calls me the next day to catch up and see how we're doing, and we talk about the previous day and night's events. She commented on how nice it was to see my husband's family, and how great it was that my husband's uncle reconciled with his son. She added that it was so nice that the son had come over to the house afterward. I said he didn't come over, he went home immediately after the memorial. My sister said, really? I could swear he was there. I explained that the only men present were my husband, his uncle, and an older cousin. My sister said she saw a man, maybe in his early to late thirties, wearing khaki pants and a sweater vest standing between the living room and kitchen. She said she made eye contact with him a couple of times and he smiled. She said he looked like he was listening and observing the conversations that were going on in the kitchen and living room, but he wasn't talking to anyone. She said her intention was to go and chat with him, thinking that it was the formerly estranged son, but was caught up in conversation with other relatives. She said that when she was finally free to go and chat, she couldn't find him anywhere. She didn't think anything of it at the time, she figured he just left. Since I already had an experience with the recliner sitting person, this made my blood run cold and honestly gave me the chills. Eventually, my husband had to return to Texas to work. My son and I stayed in California for a few weeks to clean out my mother-in-law's house. It was during my stay that more weird things happened. 
One night, I was lying in bed reading when I felt someone watching me from the hallway. My body had its own reaction to the presence that I couldn't control. I felt anxious, but not scared. Just that I knew someone was in the house besides me and my son was an eerie feeling. I finally made a deal with the ghost or ghosts. I said, listen, I know you're here and that's okay. Just don't scare or harm me or my son. Otherwise, you're welcome to stay. I can't recall the exact timeline, but one morning I found my one-year-old son completely unclothed in his pack and play. He had never, ever removed his clothing before this, and he's never done it since. Even his diaper was missing. At the time, I thought it was some new phase with him taking off his clothes, but he never did it again. Not even a sock. I truly believe some entity was responsible. It was just too out of his character to take off all of his clothes. Again, I reiterated our commands to the ghosts. You're welcome here, just don't scare or harm me or my son. I had help from my family packing away items that we wanted to keep. During this time, another sister of mine came from the hallway and said that she smelled perfume strongly in the hallway like Chanel number no. 5. There were only three of us at the house that day and all of us were working together in the kitchen. No one had been in the hallway other than to pass through to get to the restroom. I smelled the perfume a couple of times too on different occasions. My mother-in-law had all kinds of aversions and I never knew her to wear perfume so I didn't think it was her spirit. Also during this packing day, I was packing up her china from the china cabinet and I suddenly got an overwhelming scent of body odor. I even did a pit check of myself, and it wasn't me. I did a covert sniff of my sister and friend helping me that day, and they didn't smell like it either. I was hesitant to tell them, but then I just had them come over to the china cabinet area and ask if they smelled anything. They both said B.O., and it wasn't any of us. I just chalked it up to another spirit encounter. Another time, I was getting ready to host the estate sale in the house. Everything was prepped and ready for a 7 a.m. start time the next day. As part of the setup, I had my mother-in-law's shoes neatly displayed on a shoe rack in the master bedroom just a few feet from the side of the bed that I was sleeping in. I got up that morning and showered. Nothing was amiss. When I came back into the room, the racked shoes were on the floor next to the bed that I had just woken up from. The rack was still in place properly it's just that now all of the shoes were on the floor. I froze in place when I entered the room and saw the shoes. I was like, what the hell is going on here? There's no way they could have just fallen over by themselves and then been neatly placed there. They had been squarely placed on the rack the night before. I would have had to step over them to get out of bed. Additionally, some of the shoes were far from the rack. Even if they had fallen, there's no way they could have rolled that far. And it wasn't my son because I immediately checked on him and he was still sound asleep in his pack and play in a completely different room. Fast forward to later in the day of the estate sale. Another couple of friends came over to help me. After a busy morning, we had a lull in the afternoon. We tidied up a bit and put things back in place that had been handled by shoppers. We took a break and sat on the porch and chatted while we enjoyed the lull. I recounted to my friends about how I thought the house was haunted. One friend was really spooked when I told her about the perfume. She said that she too smelled it in the hallway earlier that morning. She said that she was walking behind a man in the hallway and she had an overwhelming scent of perfume. She thought it was odd that a man would be wearing such strong women's perfume. I said, well, you've met my ghost. Now for the really freaky stuff. So after I recounted all the incidents above to my friends during our break, I did a walk around of the house just to double check that things were in order for the next round of shoppers. I go into the master bedroom and the frigging shoes are on the floor again. I screamed this time. My friends came running to see what happened. They saw the shoes and they were like, you're messing with us. I said, I swear to God, I'm not messing with you. These shoes were not on the floor before. When we tidied up, I re-racked all of them. And the shoes, 
were almost in the same exact position that they had been in that morning when I found them on the floor after my shower. Freaky, man. We eventually sold the house. I asked the realtor if there was a disclosure law for haunted houses. She said she's never heard of such a thing. I told her about how I thought the house was haunted, but she probably just thought I was crazy. Either way, I definitely experienced some paranormal activity there, and I would be so curious to find out if the new owners did as well. So this took place around 2009, when I was around three years old, so it might be a little bit blurry, but here it goes. When I was little, my mom and dad moved around a lot, about seven times in three years, but this house really stuck out from the rest. It was an old Victorian house, which we found out later was a workhouse and an old cottage. It wasn't long until the paranormal activity began happening. I never slept in my room because the blinds would constantly shake with all the windows shut tight. The same thing happened in all the rooms, too. Like someone just went past and pushed them all forward and was gone. But the scariest moment was when my dad was sitting downstairs late one night. My mom and I were upstairs sleeping. My dad got the feeling that he was being watched, so he turned around and saw a tall, dark, smoke-like figure, as tall as the doorway it was standing in. So we're talking about six feet here. My dad thought he was seeing things, so he looked away, and then looked back, but the thing was still there, just standing and watching. My dad, obviously shaken, turned off the TV and got up, and that's when the figure vanished in front of him. My dad ran upstairs and didn't speak of it until later. My mom had a weird encounter when she went to use the bathroom one night. She heard somebody breathe directly into her ear. She screamed and thought it was my dad being a jerk, but when she got out, he wasn't there. So she ran upstairs, and my dad was next to me sleeping. I had a few weird things happen too, like the time, according to my dad, that I would point out a ghost of a little boy that nobody else could see except from the time that my cousin came down and swore that he saw a little boy peek around the curtain in the window when he was outside, and as soon as he looked, the boy disappeared. We would also hear childlike running on the stairs and the landing of the house, but we were never upstairs when we heard it. There was also a constant and strong smell of whiskey. When we had done our research, we found that a man who lived there previously and had died there drank cans and cans of whiskey, all day, every day. My dad went up to the attic and saw a dusty box in the corner. When he opened it up, tons of old Victorian battered shoes came tumbling out, so delicate that they apparently broke into a couple of pieces, such as the soles and the inside of the shoes. We later moved out, because when we called a priest over, he was so shaken up that he walked out telling us to get out of there immediately, because whatever was there was pure evil. The house is still up, but it's constantly up for rent or sale. I can't stop thinking about that little boy. He always seemed so sad, which is all I could remember about him. I hope he finds some peace. So, I've never been the kind of person to believe in ghosts. I'm a non-religious guy. But I've seen some odd things in my 26 years. Nothing to convince me 100% that the paranormal is legit. However, I have one interesting experience that tends to get interest every time I tell it, and honestly, has made me question my stance on the paranormal ever since. About six years ago, I was a 20-year-old student living in London. My latest flat contract had run out, and I needed a place to live ASAP. I had very little money and felt guilty needing my parents to be a guarantor, so as any broke Londoner would do, I googled the cheapest place possible, somewhere I could move into that day or the next, 
That's how last minute this was. I was fortunate, or in actual fact, misfortunate, to find a place available to move in that day. Contract signed, I had a place to live. I moved into this detached house with all my stuff the following day. It was a dirty house, but the flat occupants were all 20 to 30 year olds, four of them, and very friendly. The area was quiet, and I felt reasonably comfortable. The house was always damp and cold. It was autumn, so it's not surprising, but it was always an unpleasant atmosphere. The garden was overgrown and creepy. The windows that faced it were scratched, cracked, and looked very dirty. The hallway lights didn't work, so the entire interior of the living room and hallways connecting to the rooms were pitch black at night. The bathroom was just something else. On my first night after speaking to one of my new flatmates, I was told that they have all experienced weird noises, especially scratching on the blackened window in the bathroom. I laughed this off as utter nonsense. Probably just a tree brushing it when it gets windy outside, I thought. So after a couple of weeks, I finally started noticing weird occurrences in the building. My room's window faced the driveway, and I liked to keep my curtains closed, just because it was west-facing and I didn't like the sunlight pouring in and blinding me every morning. So I would close the curtains in the morning, head to class, come home, and find the curtains opened more than halfway. This wasn't a one-time occurrence. This happened every day. In fact, I could come home from class, close them again, go out to work or see friends, and come home to open curtains. Yet when I was in the room for hours on end, they never moved. Bit weird, but whatever. My windows were closed and locked, and so was the bedroom door when I wasn't there, and I was the only one with the key, I hope. Above me was an attic. Nobody lived up there. It was a locked storage room. But at night, I could hear what sounded like feet stomping, two people walking around, kids running, and sometimes whispers. Bit freaky, but I thought maybe someone in the house had access to this room and was using it at night, for who knows what. But no one was up there. The room was locked. I would sometimes go up at night and go to the door and try to get a sense of who the hell was in there, but no luck. I never saw anything, but I could always hear these footsteps. One of my flatmates was a very religious man. I could hear him praying at least five times a day, and he was always very friendly and open to talk about his faith, and to listen to me stress out about the awful state of the house. But he himself didn't hear or notice anything weird, other than the unhygienic state of the place. He decided at one point to head home to Algeria for a few months, with his room locked. After six to seven weeks of living there, one of the other occupants moved out, and a room was available there. I told a friend of mine that was as desperate as I had been weeks prior, and he moved in within a few days. Things were great. We worked and went to the same uni, so it was cool hanging out with a friend. I told him the stories. Due to his religious beliefs, he wasn't a believer in ghosts. And like me, he wasn't phased by the stories. But he began to notice oddities too. The same stomping noises upstairs. The scratching windows. My curtains opening on their own. He felt like he was being watched all the time. He noticed the shed in the garden had a broken panel. And could easily imagine someone being inside. Sometimes watching us in the kitchen when we made food. Routine pest control opened the shed during a visit one day and found half a dozen dead rats and a pile of hollowed out bees in there. Creepy, but no monsters, right? My friend and I were eating dinner after work in the kitchen one night. I was facing him and the door to the hallway, while Steve was facing myself and the sliding glass door that gave access to the overgrown jungle garden behind. I remember him turning pale jumping to his feet, and asking me in a very frightened tone, Can you come into my room? 
I laugh and asked why. He said, Seriously, can you please just come to my fucking room? It's not a joke. Then he bolted to his room like he was running away from something. I finished my sandwich with the last bite. Didn't even think to turn around to see what he was so spooked about. Got to his room, and he locked the door, sat on its bed, and turned on his PlayStation. After a few minutes, he calmed down, and as he started playing, he told me that he saw something in the garden. A woman in a white dress. She walked across the garden, half a meter from the glass. Almost floated past, he said. And then she vanished. He kept repeating, we have to leave, we have to leave. And that the noises were one thing, but that when you see something, everything changes. My room scarred him, and everyone else, the most. Another flatmate told us they thought they'd seen me in my room peering at them on the driveway through a 20 centimeter gap in my curtains one night. They said they saw the shape of a person's head. The only thing was, I wasn't there that night, or on any of those occasions mentioned, and I certainly don't peer at people through my window. After that, things got worse. Two nights after the kitchen incident, I'm woken up at around 3 or 4 in the morning. My friend is banging on my door in the pitch blackness of the hallway. I open it, and he comes in shaking with fear, saying his bed was vibrating and moving, and that he can't stay here any longer. The next day, he speaks to a friend. He has a place to stay, so he packs up most of his stuff, and he's gone. Within a few days, another person left. A little creeped out, but mostly annoyed with the poor state of the house. At this point, the remaining occupants and I are all looking for alternative living arrangements. Remember the religious guy that went back to Algeria? Well, he's been gone for months now and hasn't returned. The landlord makes a visit once a day, and he has a spare key, so he decides to inspect the room to make sure all is okay. So he opens it up and we go in. His room was amazing. It was warm, cozy, not damp or cold. It was honestly like a different house altogether. It was really nice, and I really don't know how to explain that. Finally, I had decided to move in with my partner, who had avoided this house the entire time I'd lived there, maybe visiting once or twice. She hated it, hated being there, and always felt uncomfortable. On my last night, I again heard weird noises, but this time in the hall. I was aware that I was home alone that night, as the only other flatmate left was on holiday. It was, as it always was, very dark when I opened the door. Nobody was there. I walked into the living room, and the window at the back that faced the side of the house was making weird scratching noises. I needed to use the bathroom, and as a necessity, I had to carry a flashlight to do the job during these hours. I walked into the bathroom, did my business, and as I'm zipping up my pants, my flashlight briefly shines over the window. For some reason, I looked, almost as if I was expecting to see something. I didn't. I walked out of the room, and I don't know why, but I decided to look at that window once more without the light. I saw the shape of a large man. I went back to my room and locked the door. All night, I heard feet stomping upstairs in the attic. I couldn't sleep, so I moved all my things into a pile in the middle of the room, sat on the bed, and waited for sunrise. I got a taxi first thing in the morning, and finally got the hell out of there. And whether I believe in anything paranormal still or not, you couldn't pay me to go back. For a little backstory, I have never experienced sleep paralysis before in my life. This is my first experience ever with it. I have three little girls, four years old, two years old, and four months old. Yesterday afternoon, I had been having battery and cold air intake issues with my car, and I needed to work on it in order to be able to get into work on Monday morning. Therefore. My retired grandmother kept the girls overnight to assist me in getting everything that I needed to get done done for work. Let's start with Saturday. 
Have you ever heard of the creepy fact that if you wake up in the middle of the night for no reason at all, it means that somebody was staring at or watching you? This is because it was instinctively bred into us as a protective instinct. Our senses are heightened in this moment to protect us from a possible threat that had been eyeing us down while we're asleep. Well, this happened to me Saturday at 3 a.m. As I awoke, I heard an eerie whistling in my ear. I quickly checked my surroundings, bobbing and weaving my eyes through every crevice that whoever or whatever was watching me could be hiding. I found nothing and heard nothing else, and I was able to doze back off fairly quickly. Sunday night came along, last night. I had trouble falling asleep, a lot more than usual, and I wasn't stressed or anything like that. My sleep schedule hasn't changed more than an hour, more or less. And I'm used to getting about six and a half to seven hours of sleep at night. So absolutely nothing was different. I had been tossing and turning from midnight to 1.30 in the morning, going in and out of catnap mode. I couldn't seem to get my brain to have a reasonable reboot. Once I had become comfortable for the last time, I hadn't even noticed that I had finally shut down for a sleep restoration. The first thing I remember is my grandmother's house. It had a dark blue tint that blanketed the whole house. Every room, wall, everything was hued in blue. I remember walking through and checking in each room. I guess I was unintentionally checking on my girls that were sleeping over at my grandmother's house. I felt like I was astral projecting. I knew that I was consciously awake and walking around her house. I knew each room that I was walking into. Whatever my subconscious was worried about, everything was fine. My grandparents and baby girls were all sound asleep, peaceful. I watched them for a couple of minutes, checking their breathing, and then I started to walk home. In a matter of seconds, I was walking through my door my husband still asleep on the couch, but something didn't feel right. The ominous blue light was still blanketing every room, every corner. Imagine putting a blue light bulb in every fixture and then turning them all on. It was like that. I sat at my dining room table to meditate and clear my head before returning my body back to the couch. I needed my conscious to stop wandering and rest. As I sat there, I heard a voice that had multiple tones working together in harmony to create the most demonic and ominous voice I've ever heard. I felt my mind, my body, and my voice lose control. I couldn't move. I couldn't talk. I couldn't think for myself. He took control. The voices got louder. A female voice and a deep male voice harmonized to create a legion-like sound. They kept repeating, you are everything, you are everything, until I began to say it in harmony with them. I had no control. My mind didn't want to repeat it, but I had no choice. I felt like I was being possessed. Anyone could take over what felt like an empty shell I used to call my body at this point. What they were saying changed. The woman's voice disappeared and it was just the deep and demonic male voice I heard now. He said, I am everything, I am everything, repeating and repeating. At this point, I felt my body and mind fighting back. I was fully conscious and awake now, fighting as hard as I could to keep my shell of a body contained by its rightful owner. I was screaming my husband's name, but I knew he couldn't hear me, not yet. I had to keep screaming to wake my body up. I felt my brain's confusion. It was fighting me while I was fighting my demon. We weren't working together and I could sense it all. I started to communicate, trying to move my body. I knew I couldn't. I knew that I was caught. My ribs, my hips, my thighs were glued where I lie on my left side, unmovable. I could only move my head. My screams for my husband became muffled, which is much more than I could say just moments before. I turned my head and looked behind me. I needed to be released. I had to be let go. 
As I whipped my head to my rear, a tall and skinny shadow towered over me, enjoying my struggle, gluing me where I lie. Large, skinny hands with slender, rigid fingers pushed me deeper into my couch, held my body in a trance. There were no features, just a black and haunting silhouette that had been forcing me to say everything I had earlier. He was the one. I was finally able to communicate to my brain to move, anything, just move. Still a fight that I had to put up, but at least I knew I was finally winning. Finally, my screams were no longer muffled. My husband finally heard me, as a relief had washed over me, and it was gone. I was able to sit up, patting myself with shaking hands to make myself aware that I was back. I was me again and I finally had control once more. I went out and had a cigarette to calm my nerves. I felt the smoke hit me and the nicotine soothe my mind, but I still felt and knew the pain, the struggle and the torture that I had gone through, and I wonder if it will happen again. I don't know who these voices were. I don't know what the demon was that calls himself everything. Will he come back for me again? even when I fought back so hard and won? I can't find the answers that I need, but I know this wasn't just a nightmare or some freak accident. There was a reason this happened to me, and I need to know what it was. Before this, I had never experienced anything ghostly, except some chills and some shadows, before I moved into this house with my cousin. We were both going through divorces, and she needed a house with rooms for her kids, and I couldn't afford anything on my own. We found a 100-year-old house to rent, with four bedrooms. It had a yard, and a garage, and it was perfect, and affordable. We moved in the day after the eclipse, and it was full of bright summer light, and I was excited. We couldn't get my cousin's bed up the stairs, so she spent the first night with her friend, and I was alone in the house. I couldn't sleep. I was paranoid somebody would break in. It wasn't in a great neighborhood, and the house had several entry points. I got up around midnight for a drink of water. I was looking through the kitchen window and could see a basement window. I saw a light flick on in the basement, and I froze. I locked the door to the basement stairs and I called the cops. Clearly, somebody was in the basement. The cops came, guns out of the holsters, apparently there was a nearby robbery, and searched the entire house. They found nobody. I wasn't too spooked at that point because it's a really old house, you know? Stuff creaks and cracks and shoddy electrical work was probably the culprit. The next week, I could hear my cousin upstairs when I woke up. My cousin was getting ready. I made some extra coffee and left for work without seeing her. I mentioned that she left the coffee pot on, and she acted surprised. Turns out she wasn't home. I would constantly hear footsteps upstairs when nobody was there. I hear them so clearly on the staircase that I think for sure I'll see somebody walking down it, but I never do. It was manageable during the day, it didn't seem that scary, but at night I was terrified. I would often be in the house alone, trying to sleep. I could hear all kinds of sounds, kitchen cabinets shutting, doors opening and closing, footsteps. Also just that intense feeling of being watched. About twice a week I would experience sleep paralysis. I would feel like somebody was standing next to my bed and I couldn't move to look at them. Then I would snap out of it after what felt like hours and I would just be drenched in sweat. This would happen to my cousin too. I had my friend stay the night with me because eventually I just couldn't handle it. My friend had sleep paralysis and felt like somebody was next to her that she couldn't see. We got up and checked the house after we heard footsteps around 3am and again found nothing. One night after getting home late, I worked two jobs. I walked in and my hair stood on end. It was a full blood supermoon that night and my cousin was at her full moon circle so the house was empty. I hear something move behind me. 
and then a man's voice said, Hello. I know it sounds horribly cliché, but that's what I heard, and it was like somebody was in the room with me. I jumped out of my skin and ran from the house. It took me a while to go back. I spent a few nights at my boyfriend's house. My cousin was in the kitchen when a cabinet slammed shut right next to her. She couldn't recreate it. She heard something call her name while she was in her bedroom, and one night she heard her daughter talking to someone, begging them to let her sleep. When she asked who her daughter was talking to, she said, the spirit, the sleep paralysis, the footsteps, the doors, the intense vibes all continued. The activity picked up with the moon cycle. I never believed in anything really, but after this house I have realized that ghosts are real, and I believe they feed off energy. I never experienced sleep paralysis before living in that house, and I haven't since. This sounds insane, but I believe that somehow the trauma we experienced during our divorces opened up some kind of door. I feel like I was constantly seeping out anger and fear in that house, and that I fueled something. I feel like I have figured out how to close that door. I'm aware of spirits now, but I don't acknowledge them. I just shut my door and let them pass. I had night terrors from age 3 to 11. I feel like the theory that the Insidious movie laid out is really not that far off. I'm an empath. I can feel other people's emotions in the room with me. Most people can, on some level, they just don't usually think that much about it. I feel like all of these things play together somehow. I know some of my friends don't believe me at all, and I don't blame them, but I am a little bit offended if I'm honest. I'm usually the planner. The one who's organizing everything, and I always have my shit together. I'm just wondering if anyone has ever experienced anything like this, or knows what I'm talking about. I grew up in a haunted house. I have so many stories. But this one was on my mind today. Sidebar. Most of the encounters revolve around my brothers. I believe that my middle brother has abilities, and I believe that my youngest brother, who is also autistic, is a medium. I'm a little sensitive, but nothing like them. One particular evening, my teenaged brother and two of his buddies were hanging out at my parents' house and nobody was there but them. My brother got a phone call from a girl, so he went upstairs to his room, leaving the two friends downstairs. When he came back down about 15 minutes later, he found the house completely quiet and totally dark. The TV had been turned off and the lights as well. He said that the only light was the last little bit of dwindling daylight trickling through the windows and the glass on the front door. He started laughing and calling for his friends, thinking that they were hiding from him and playing a joke. He walked through the downstairs room by room, but couldn't find them. He started feeling really nervous, so he began trying to call his friends, but they weren't answering, and he couldn't hear their phones ringing from where he was. He went and checked upstairs to see if maybe they'd snuck past him and were hiding, but they were nowhere. By now, he said the entire vibe of the whole house had changed. He was feeling very anxious. He ran down the stairs and exited the front door directly across from the steps on the front porch leaving the front door slightly open. As soon as he stepped outside, the front door slammed, and something from the inside of the house started banging on the door with great force and intensity. It really scared him, and he was also getting irritated, so he opened the door to confront his friends. He was laughing, saying, Oh, ha ha, okay, y'all got me. But inside, the house was silent and still. It was at that point that he heard a car door shut in the cul-de-sac, and he turned around only to see his friends arriving at the house. They told him that they had left when he took that phone call and ran to the gas station. They swore on their lives that they knew nothing about the door. So, my family moved into the house in question in 1999. I was five at the time. The house isn't too old, built in the 70s, and I live in a very small community. 
so as far as I know, nothing bad ever happened there. Just to give you a quick layout of the house, when you come in the front door, to the left is a hallway, and the last door on the left is my bedroom. But there is a bathroom at the very end of the hallway, and the way the house was laid out is such that whenever the bathroom door is open, the mirror reflects back down the hall toward you. Things only happened after the sun went down. Ever since I was young, I would always wake up in the middle of the night either thirsty or hungry, so I would go to the kitchen to make a snack. While walking back to my room down the hall, I would always feel something right behind me, reaching, trying to grab a hold of me, which of course forced me to speed walk or light sprint back to my room, where I would sit quietly trying to calm my heart. Whenever the bathroom door is open though, and you could see your reflection in the hall, I never felt like I was being followed, but I would see shadows running around behind me or peeking their heads out around the corner like they didn't want to be seen. Shortly after we moved in, we got a dog, since then we always had dogs in the house. We've had three in total, and most of the time, if I was ever home alone, they would come and hang out with me. And every dog, even to this day, will occasionally just stare at my bedroom door that leads to the hall, or even snarl at it. Fast forward a few years to 17 to 18 year old me, I'm working a part-time retail job where I keep the keys to the store. On some occasions I had the mornings off, and someone would need the keys to open, so I left them in the mailbox outside my front door just so I wouldn't have to wake up early. It happened on two occasions where my coworker John would come to get the keys in the morning, and as he was getting back in the car, he would see somebody staring at him through my dad's bedroom window, which was the room next to mine. John stared at him for a few minutes and waved a little, but the figure didn't move or react. He would just look down to start his car, look back up, and the figure would be totally gone. He described the figure as a wrinkled old man with a bald head. Nobody in my family has ever matched that description, and at the time, my entire family had left for work, and I was still sound asleep in bed. I'm also not an old man. John had refused to ever go back to get the keys again after that. I don't know how many entities I have in my home, and though I have an uneasiness and nervous feeling, I never felt outright threatened, until one day. I was 22 at the time, I was just in the basement getting laundry on a normal day. Nothing was off, nothing felt weird, it was 100% normal. I was finished folding all my clothes, so I went to carry them upstairs to my bedroom. And as I was climbing the stairs, I heard loud stomping coming from behind me, down the hallway where the laundry room was. Then they sped up, as if somebody was running full sprint toward me. I spun around, and I saw this black figure round the corner and barrel up the stairs. It made it to within an inch of my face, and then disappeared. I almost shot myself. I've never felt such anger and malice in my whole life. I ran to my bedroom, slammed the door, and just sat there in silence, listening for any bit of movement at all. But it was completely still. Those are the experiences that I've had so far. I can only guess what might come next, but I think it's safe to say I definitely live in a haunted house. This isn't about one creepy thing that happened. I didn't physically see an apparition. But promise me that you'll pretend to be in my shoes in each situation. I'm not telling this story to impress anyone. Rather, I just need to get these experiences off my chest. It's happened for years, ever since I can remember. The first thing I remember was me watching TV in the living room, probably in elementary school and I had just finished my bowl of chips. I placed it in the sink and went back to sit on the couch, and it was completely silent. I then heard the bowl tapping against my metal sink, like it was unbalanced, so I went to adjust it. When I got to the kitchen, it stopped, 
So I went to sit back down, but the noise started again. I shrugged it off and told my mom about it, but she said it was a coincidence. Moving on. I'm in middle school now, and I've looked into the paranormal. I had to. I would hear footsteps on the stairs at night, but I chose to believe it was the house settling. It always had a creepy feeling of being watched, and I would hear random knocks or bangs. I'm doing my homework in my bed with the door closed. All of a sudden, the doorknob viciously began shaking, as if somebody was trying to open a locked door, but it wasn't locked. I jumped out of bed when it stopped and ran to my brother's room, which is right next door to mine, and swung his door open. I accused him of shaking my handle, but he was extremely confused and asked, why would I do something so stupid when I'm doing my homework? Still freaked out, I just went to finish my homework, but I was distracted, glancing at the doorknob every so often. Some short points that didn't happen to me. My parents' closet is always closed, but one morning my dad found a small puddle of blood on a pair of new shoes that he never wears, but neither of them found cuts on themselves. My brother just saw the first Paranormal Activity movie, but my mom didn't because she hates that stuff. But a couple of nights later, she walks into his room and stands by his bed just staring at him. He freaks out and tells her to leave, but she stays there for five minutes and then walks back to her room. The next morning, she had no recollection. I know how fake this sounds, but trust me, I only wish I was making it up. After that, my mom was home alone and decided to take a shower. In the middle of her shower, the bathroom door flies open and hits the wall. She throws a robe on and runs out, thinking, of course, that there was an intruder. But nobody was found. I'm now a teenager, watching YouTube in my bedroom, when I hear a loud bang outside my door. I think my brother fell in the bathroom, which is next to his room so I ran out into the hallway to laugh at him, but he's in his room, so I asked if he just fell, to which he replied no. Instead, he said, I thought you fell. We search around for something that has fallen, but to no avail. A couple months later in December, we're going into our attic to get the Christmas decorations. Our attic has all of our boxes lined up along the perimeter. When we peeked up there, there was a box on its side, right in the middle. I think it's important to note that our attic is right above the bathroom. Nothing crazy has happened after that, except for me and my friend hearing a car start in our garage, but no car was running. We just thought we were crazy. But one day after school of senior year, I'm home alone and my boyfriend lives 10 houses down the street. So I planned on walking there soon. I'm sitting on my living room floor with our family dog and cat. I then hear the loudest, most distinct noise I've ever heard. Imagine having a two-story house with a very tall living room and dining room ceiling. I heard someone stomping and running in my room. I'm telling you, I heard it. My cat runs away, my dog jumps up defensive, I ran outside to look on my roof, but nobody was there. I ran around the whole house looking up there, but there was just the roof. I ran back in the house, grabbed my phone and my keys, and then ran to my car. I cried to my boyfriend and his family about it for an hour, but I still don't know if they believe me. At this point, I'm 19 years old, and my parents have divorced. I'm living with my mom in a small apartment with a tiny washer and dryer. My dad left for town on a business trip, so I asked if I could wash my clothes at his house and he agreed. I'm terrified of being there alone, so I brought my boyfriend and his older friend Devante. Devante is 24. I told them the things that have happened and Devante says it's all in my head. I laughed and I said, I hope something paranormal happens to you tonight so you'll believe me. The dryer says it'll take 74 minutes, 
So my boyfriend and I go to play a board game, and since it's 10 p.m., Devante wants to take a nap. I told him he can go up to my brother's old room since my brother has moved out and nobody uses it, so he does. Ten minutes later, we hear a bang, and we thought he dropped his phone between the bed and the wall. The bed is pressed against the wall connected to the hallway, so it makes sense that it would be so loud. About ten more minutes go by, and we hear Devante saying something upstairs, but we figured he was talking on the phone. Then he gets louder. My boyfriend and I look at each other, confused. Devante yells, Holly, come get your man. Now, more confused, I tell my boyfriend Anthony to run up there and see what's wrong. When he gets to the room, Devante asks, Wait, what? He's staring at him, wide-eyed. Devante says, No, did you just run up those stairs? Devante got up and exited the room and ran down to where I was waiting. He said, Tell me you didn't just run up there when I called you. Anthony and I were super confused, and Devante began freaking out and pacing. He said he heard somebody whispering, Get out, get out, get out. And it slowly got louder until they were yelling at him to get out. He thought my boyfriend was just messing with him. That's why we heard Devante talking. He was saying things like, Anthony, F off. And Anthony, stop it, I'm trying to sleep. Devante was so freaked out that we left that night, not finishing the laundry. We had to pick it up the next day. I laugh at this because it's such a stereotypical thing to have a ghost say get out in movies and on YouTube videos, but I've never seen him teary-eyed and so genuinely terrified as he was that night. That's the end of it all, I think. My boyfriend and I and my mom moved halfway across the country for other reasons. I think all of my paranormal struggles are over. Well, maybe. In our new house, a bang was heard in the sunroom, which freaked both of our dogs out. The puppy wouldn't even re-enter the room. Just tonight, we got Chipotle and ate in our bedroom, and that's when I heard the foil with the tortillas in it being dragged on my nightstand table. Yes, the fans were going, but not strong enough to pull the heavy tortilla and foil with it. I'm spooked out and decided to write down all of my experiences to make myself feel better. Again, it's not a one-time story, and it's probably not as entertaining as other ghostly things that you'll read here, but I needed this off my chest. If any of you have experienced these things, please let me know. It would make me feel so much better to know that I'm not alone. My parents bought the house we're currently living in two years ago. It has four levels, not stories, just levels. When you enter the house or main floor, to your left are the stairs that lead to upstairs, quote unquote. Next to those stairs are the ones that take you downstairs, and to the left of those are the basement stairs. We live in Arlington, Texas. We moved into this house in the summer of 2017. Before we moved in, we would stay the weekends and paint the house. We stayed in Fort Worth on the weekdays so we could continue school. After our first night of staying here, I had a nightmare that a little boy was in our house. He would follow me wherever I went and pushed me off a chair I was standing on. That's when all the nightmares began. After several weeks of living there, I was in the dining room cleaning. My back was facing the staircase that led to the upstairs. Once you go up the stairs, it's like a little balcony. I suddenly had the feeling that I should turn around. I slowly turned my head and in the corner of my eye, I could see what looked like a little boy. He was dangling his legs between the railing. I quickly turned my head all the way to see who was there, but nobody was. It was just an empty staircase. My whole family was downstairs in the living room too, so it wasn't any of them. I thought I was just seeing things, so I didn't mention it to anyone. The location where I saw this little boy is right outside my bedroom door. 
Some time had passed and I hadn't seen anything else. Out of the blue, my older sister had admitted to me that she saw what looked like a little kid standing at the top of the staircase close to where I saw him. My mom overheard what we were talking about and told us that she too had seen something. One day she was heading down to the basement. The basement is dark and the lights take a few seconds to turn on. It's also dark down there because there's only one window. She saw what looked like a hunched over man run past the stairs and out of her view. There are closets on both sides of the stairs, so they block your view of seeing the whole basement. You can only see straight ahead. If you stood looking down the stairs, you would see the closet with some metal tank thing inside. I think it's for the air conditioner. You can't go in there. Although, in the closet there is a hole that leads to under the stairs. You can't reach the hole because half of it is blocked off with wood. She saw this hunched over man run into that closet. After seeing that, she was too scared to go downstairs for the rest of the day. In our basement is also our laundry room. All the lights in the basement have a delay. My older sister told me that when she walked into the laundry room, she could see the outline of a man standing in the corner. She froze for a few seconds and then the lights turned on and there was absolutely nothing there. She was looking at the shadow when she turned the light on and it just disappeared. Nothing to make a shadow look like a man was there either. My mother also said that she saw a man walk past our back door. He was tall and all she could make out was his silhouette. We have a big sliding glass door. She went to investigate and nobody was in our backyard. Our yard is pretty long and our fences are tall. We also had our dog in the back at the time. He didn't like strangers being in our backyard and he would bark like crazy and jump on them. One night while I was sleeping, my mom woke me up frantically. She asked me if I was humming. I told her that I wasn't humming, I was sleeping, and that I wanted to go back to sleep because I had school the next day. She proceeded to tell me that when she was walking up the stairs to go to her room, which is right across from mine, she heard humming. It was soft, slow humming, and it sounded like it was coming from my room. She thought she had caught me staying up late, so my mom slowly opened my door. She could make out what looked like a small child kneeling at the foot of my bed, watching me sleep. The humming stopped when she turned on the lights, and the figure disappeared too. I told her that I didn't hear any humming, but after that I was too scared to go back to sleep. I don't remember when this happened, but my brother-in-law and my older sister's bedroom is downstairs. He told me that one night, he randomly woke up and didn't know why. That's when he noticed the silhouette of a really tall man standing at the foot of his bed. He didn't really care though and went back to sleep. He told my sister in the morning what he saw and she freaked out. One night, when my mom was in her room alone, she heard knocking on her bedroom window. Our rooms are on the second floor. Her window faces the front of the house. The front lawn is on a steep hill. She opened the curtains, but nobody was there. Sometimes, out of the corner of my eye, I can see the silhouette of a tall man standing at the stairs that lead upstairs. But when you turn to look, no one is there. Heavy footsteps can be heard coming upstairs from the basement, but no one is ever there either. The kitchen faucet has turned on by itself twice now. Small things disappear, like utensils. What really scared me the most was when my baby sister, who was three or four at the time, randomly told me one night that there was a man under our bed. Not a monster, a full-grown man. Almost every single night I have a nightmare, and I'm always dying in them. My death is different in every single one. Sometimes I'm murdered, sometimes it's an accident, a natural disaster, natural causes, the list goes on and on. We have smudged the house numerous times. We put cinnamon sticks at every single window and circle the house with salt. The little boy has seemed to disappear. But now we see or hear the man more and more. 
We've asked our neighbors who have lived here previously, but they don't know. We're all new to the neighborhood. I've tried finding stuff online about our house, but I can never find anything. What should we do? Everybody is too afraid to be home alone. No one likes the basement. I'm scared to leave my room at night. I have a feeling that something is under the stairs, but I know that nothing can get under there. Nobody can fit, except of course for maybe a child. I used to live in the Philippines, and the house that I lived in was built when the Philippines was being occupied by Japan during World War II. It had two small walkways, one at the side of the house and one at the back. At the corner where the two walkways met is where my dog's huge wooden doghouse was. I say huge because I could literally go in and sleep in it comfortably, and I was a pretty big kid of 12 years old. One night, my uncle told me to go feed Casper. Yes, that really is my dog's name. Of course, I said yes right away because I wanted to play with my dog, so I went. Now, Casper is a happy dog, always running around and always happy to see any of my family. But that night was different. While I was walking towards his doghouse, I realized that I didn't hear him barking or running around so I thought that he was at the back walkway. So I just continued toward the doghouse. It was nighttime, around eight. I stopped halfway through when I noticed that Casper was inside the doghouse. This was worrisome, because he always runs at me when he sees me, so I thought maybe something was wrong, like maybe he was sick or whatever. I quickened my pace to get to him. Once I got there though, he seemed fine. I put down the food and filled up his water bowl. I got no reaction whatsoever. Casper was just staring toward the back walkway. I got curious, so I looked toward where he was looking. And what I saw gives me chills even remembering it. I saw a man standing there just staring at me with a blank expression. He was wearing some kind of military uniform and was holding a rifle. I'm not a gun expert, so I can't tell you what it was. At the tip of the gun rested a bayonet. What got me focused on it was that the bayonet was bloody. At that point, I was just frozen. I remember the fear and thinking, this is it. Someone's here and he's going to kill me. I don't quite remember what made me look away from the bayonet. But when I did, the first thing I noticed about the man was that he was now missing half of his face. Seeing him only have half of a face jolted me out of my frozen state, and I ran for it. I didn't care to look back to see if he was following me or not. I even tackled my uncle, who was coming to check on me. I cried so hard when I realized that I was on top of my uncle. He took me inside and waited for me to stop crying. I ended up crying myself to sleep. The next morning, my uncle talked to me about what happened, and I told him everything. He was genuinely worried when I finished, because he told me that I was out there in the walkway for an hour, and that was the reason that he had come to check on me. He also told me that I wasn't the only one to experience such things in the house. I later found out that the uniform the man was wearing was the standard Japanese military uniform at the time of World War II. At 16, I was responsible for getting my seven-year-old sister on the bus for school. I always had to get her dressed, feed her, and tie her hair up in a ponytail. One morning, I was sick, but I got her up as usual and got her off to school. I was super nauseated and laid on the couch with a trash can next to me. The TV was playing some cartoon on Disney, and I had my arm covering my eyes as I laid there. I was dozing off as I heard my sister come into the living room and say, Sissy, will you tie my hair up? Not really thinking about it, my eyes still covered. I held out my hand, waiting for her to place her hair tie in my palm. Whatever this thing actually was, must have realized that it couldn't give me what I was asking for. And right around that time, 
I realized that I had already gotten my sister up and on the bus that morning, so whatever was standing next to me wasn't my sister at all. As I sat up, spooked as hell, the thing ran off. I could hear its footsteps running through the kitchen and down the hallway. I didn't see anything, no apparition, just sounds. I walked to my grandmother's house about a block away, and shortly after that I moved in with her because my mother and I couldn't get along. Weird things like that happened all the time on that property. What I didn't expect was for it to follow me to my grandmother's. Two weeks after moving in, I was in the room with the door cracked. I was home alone, and it was late. My brother, who was 15 at the time, was always at the neighbor's house and would stop in to shower, eat, and sleep. I heard him come in, go into his room, and fiddle around. I could hear him talking, like he was on the phone with someone. I called for him, and he didn't respond, so I assumed he was just pranking me. I got up and left my room, and his bedroom door across the hall was closed and locked. I stuck my thumbnail into the keyhole and popped it open, planning to scare him. When I opened the door, his lights were off. His room was dark, and it was empty. I flipped the light on and started investigating. I opened the closet, looked under his desk, and assumed that he'd gone out the window and was going to come back in and scare me or something. When I checked the window, it was bolted down, something my grandmother had done to keep him from sneaking out. I was perplexed, and then spooked. I left his room to go check the rest of the house, and as I was walking down the hallway and into the living room, I heard someone running hard behind me. As I turned around, this nothing of a presence ran right through me and took my breath away. I fell to the floor, feeling like I'd just gotten socked in the gut. When I came to, I ran next door to find my brother passed out on the couch with his friends. It was an absolutely terrifying experience, and one that I will always remember. I don't know what that thing was, but it mimicked my siblings perfectly. Their voices, their footsteps, their actions, everything. This story takes place around 2004 to 2006. I was a really young kid at the time. My friend, who I'll refer to as Lance, lived with his mother, stepfather, two brothers, and younger sister. His family ended up moving into a nice, spacious home, which was actually in a pretty nice neighborhood. It was an exciting time for Lance and his family. Prior to this move, he and his family only lived in apartment complexes, so this was a real change of pace, a great transition. Initially, all seemed well within the first few weeks. That is, until one day, we all decided to play hide-and-seek throughout the house. While I was hiding in a room, I got a really strange and eerie feeling, like somebody was watching me. I then felt like something brushed across the top of my hair, and the whole room got really cold, and all of my hair was standing on end. Classic signs of a ghostly presence, I guess. When I told Lance, his family, and my friends about the experience, nobody believed me. Fast forward a few weeks later, Lance's mom was laying in bed. Her husband, Lance's stepfather, was at work. She was all alone. Everyone else was away at the time. It was late at night, and suddenly she heard the bedroom door open and it felt like someone crawled into bed with her. At first, she assumed that it was her husband, but when she turned over, nobody was there. The entire room felt ice cold, and then she heard what sounded like a female voice right next to her. This voice called her name, and that's when she saw the shadow figure standing in the corner of the room. She said she ran out of the room as fast as she could, screaming like crazy, and went onto the front porch, waiting for her husband to return home. After that experience, Lance's mom believed me. Many other bizarre things started occurring around the home. Eventually, everyone started experiencing things that they couldn't explain, 
so at this point, everyone believed me. One of the spookiest places in the house was the basement. I had a really bad habit of leaving my shoes down there. Lance and I used to spend a lot of time down there because they had a small pool table. Whenever I had to go down there by myself to get my shoes, I always felt like I was being watched. It was such a creepy feeling. I actually just refused to retrieve my shoes a few times because it was that bad. The incident that really amplified everything was one night when Lance and his siblings were all asleep. Lance's stepfather and his buddies were in the living room watching a football game. Suddenly, a lamp in the living room straight up levitated off the table and smashed into a nearby wall. Everybody in the living room freaked out. Moments later, a speaker straight up fell over in Lance's upstairs bedroom for no apparent reason. That's two different poltergeist activities occurring in two opposite parts of the home at the same time. That incident got everyone's attention. One experience that truly creeped me out is when Lance and I were in his room playing video games. This was during the middle of the day. Lance went downstairs to get something while I stayed in his room playing GTA Vice City. I then heard a creaking sound coming down the hallway. The door to the bedroom was wide open. I then spotted a shadow of what looked like a little girl on the wall. At first, I honestly thought it was Lance's younger sister's shadow, so I called out her name, but there was no answer. Then the entire room got super cold, and I heard what sounded like a whisper right next to me. I straight up dropped the controller and ran as fast as I could out of that room. Shadow figures were a common occurrence within the home. That, along with moving objects, cold spots, unexplained voices, and constant footsteps. The upstairs level of the home was beyond scary. I felt bad for Lance that he had to sleep up there. If I lived there, there's no way I could sleep in that room. I never slept over at that house, by the way. I mean, sure, I would stay for hours on end, but I never fell asleep there. Ever. Lance's mom ended up going through family photos that were taken in the house. There were tons of pictures that had orbs, unexplained faces, and shadowy beings. She was absolutely horrified upon seeing those pictures. At that point, she seriously considered moving. One time, she called in a realtor to discuss selling the home. Out of curiosity and with an odd look on his face, he asked, have you ever experienced anything unusual here? He was clearly aware of the activity in the home. Lance's mom told him briefly what they had experienced, and he then pulled out some documents detailing the history and previous owners of the home. Turns out there were a total of four deaths in the house. The first death occurred in the 1960s. Some guy was apparently drunk and fell down the basement stairs and broke his neck. The second death was an old lady who had a heart attack in Lance's mother's bedroom. The third death occurred in Lance's bedroom. Apparently, a lady lived there who was heavily involved with witchcraft. She used to conduct rituals in her home. Her death was a bit unclear. She apparently suffocated or experienced some random health problem, but it was pretty much still inconclusive. The fourth death, or deaths, for that matter, occurred in another upstairs bedroom. Apparently, there was a violent domestic occurrence between a husband and a wife. The husband killed his wife and then shot himself. So at this point, Lance's mom felt confirmed that it was time to move. Another terrifying incident involved Lance's younger brother. His brother supposedly spotted a man standing at the top of the stairs, covered in blood, and who had dark blue skin and solid black eyes. His younger brother constantly claimed to see people and figures around the home. As a last ditch effort, Lance's mom called in a priest to bless the home. This was by far the scariest and most paranormal event I've ever personally witnessed. When the priest entered the home, he immediately got a bad feeling, especially in Lance's bedroom. When conducting the blessing, things got intense. 
objects around the home started flying all over the place, like something out of a movie. And then suddenly, a bright flashing orb reflected off of Lance's mom's wedding picture and hit her in the chest. She fainted upon contact with this orb. The entire night of the blessing was terrifying. The priest actually stayed the night. When he returned home, he claimed that the spirit followed him. So in conclusion, Lance and his family eventually moved out. The blessing was a total failure. The house was too creepy to stay in. I get chills just telling the story. To this day, I still drive past the house every now and again, and it still gives me the creeps. Someone else lives there now. I guess you could say I took a piece of the house with me, because I actually do own an original object from the home. They were found in the attic. There were three miniature statues, along with a book about the occult that Lance's mom found up there. She was about to throw all the items out. She threw away the book, but I took the statues. To this day, they're still in my possession, on a shelf, in my bedroom. Although, I've never experienced anything paranormal from them. Not yet. When I was a little girl of about 10 or so, I would always go shopping with my aunt for my birthday. But this particular time was a little different. She wanted me to stay the night and then go shopping the next day. I agreed to do this because who doesn't love going shopping with your aunt as a kid? I was always creeped out by her house for the longest time before I stayed that night. My dad and brother have had experiences before me. They always camped out in the backyard in the woods. She had a big place, a house, a barn, a pool, even a pond, and lots of land. Sounds perfect, right? Anyway, they said that they saw a fog surrounding the house. Not the barn or anything else, but just the house. Creepy. And they also heard things in the woods, too. Yes, I am thinking what you're thinking, it was most likely animals. The fog was harder to explain. Either way, I figured that they were just trying to scare me, so I didn't think too much of it when the opportunity to stay there at night came up. Let's get on to that experience. I was up in the bedroom, right at the top of the stairs. If you walked straight up the stairs, you could walk straight into the bedroom. The catch to the bedroom is that it had a baby gate on it, so it was very hard to get in and out quickly. There was a home office to the left of the stairs, and then to the right, there was like another living room area, with an old time bedroom connected to it with dolls and glass tea sets. Oddly enough, that's the room that I felt the safest in. Off of the living room area was a long hallway that led to my aunt and uncle's room. I was laying in bed watching my favorite movie, Mary Poppins. It was at least 9 p.m. at night. Bedtime for a child like me, right? I fell asleep during the movie. I woke up with the TV off and to a room that was completely pitch black. The door was open and I could barely see the staircase leading down. I tried to close my eyes so that I wouldn't be so scared. But what happened next? I can never forget. I heard footsteps coming up the stairs and they weren't heavy, so I knew that they weren't my aunt or uncle. In fact, it sounded like a child walking up the steps. I hid under the covers and hoped that it would go away. The footsteps came all the way up the stairs, across the room, and stood right next to my bed. I tried very hard to be still and quiet. Finally, the entity turned away and I heard the little steps go back down the stairs. I was really relieved until I heard them ascend the staircase once more. I was so scared I wanted to scream for my aunt, but she was so far away she wouldn't have been able to hear me anyway. It came back into the room again. As I hid under the covers for the second time, it came and stopped by the other side of the bed, closest to me. I felt it tug on my blanket, and then it turned away and walked back down the stairs. So this time I got smart, or stupid. 
I don't know, you can decide that for yourself. Once I heard that it was far enough away, I jumped out of bed. I opened the baby gate, and I ran all the way to my aunt and uncle's room and crawled into bed with them. Let me tell you, I scared the crap out of them. Once they finally made room for me, I got all cozy, but I couldn't sleep. Anyway, it was about a minute after I got into bed with them that I heard the baby gate slam. I was so terrified, but at least I was with my aunt and uncle. The next morning, I woke up in their bed alone upstairs. Now, you might not believe this, but I don't really care if you do or not. But I woke up to three scratches on my chest, and they were very painful. To this day, nobody really believes me that it happened, besides my best friend. This event still haunts me. I don't really talk to people about it because nobody ever believes me and I don't want to get ridiculed, but I just had to vent. Whatever it was, I still don't know. A demon posing as a child? Probably. Something evil? That's for sure. But I guess I'll never really know. This is another story from my haunted house. This is about my youngest brother that I mentioned in part one. He's 10 years younger than me and has Asperger's syndrome. Everyone in my immediate family is 100% convinced that he's a medium. I think that's why our house is haunted, because I had a dream about that. I think they're drawn to him. Anyway, when he was maybe three or four, he was pretty developmentally delayed. He could speak, but he chose what he spoke about very carefully and that was usually only his two special interests, Toy Story and the aliens that came to talk to him at night. There was a nursing home being converted into an antique mall in my hometown, and one afternoon, my mom went down there with my brother in tow to see about renting a space. The second they walked in the door, my almost nonverbal brother said, this place is haunted, and was totally fascinated. He wasn't scared at all. He took off running through the halls while my mom spoke with the owner about rates. He eventually found his way back to my mom and would not stop tugging on her until she acknowledged him. When she spoke to him, he started telling her and the owner about all the ghosts that were there. He said that they were all old people and that they were really bored. He said one old man was quite weird. The owner actually verified this by saying multiple contractors had quit because they said it was haunted. Another example, my mom loves yard sales and would sometimes have estate sales for people for a profit. She had trouble finding a daycare that would accommodate my brother so he was usually with her. She had an estate sale for a lady that was referred to her by an acquaintance. While preparing for the sale, she purchased a gorgeous bedroom set that ended up being my bedroom set. After their sale, she met with whom she thought was the homeowner to pick up the bedroom suite. They were standing in the bedroom chatting when the husbands were disassembling the furniture and my then seven-ish year old brother comes running in saying that the sweet old lady in the kitchen gave him some cookies and that they were very delicious. My mom looked at the lady who then burst into tears. She said that this was her mom's house and that her mom had recently passed. The neighborhood kids always called her the cookie lady and would often ring her doorbell in hopes of receiving a cookie, which she was always happy to provide. Such a sweet little quip. There are also darker stories from this house, but always nice to end on a bright note once in a while. In Thessaloniki, Greece, several people consider a certain house to be very haunted. The house was said to have been the mansion of its previous owner, and today it has not been inhabited since it's dilapidated and the surrounding area has been transformed into a warehouse for building materials. It's rumored that those who have stayed there at night have heard terrible noises from ghosts roaming in the rooms, making them flee in terror. It is also said that the previous owner's building is accompanied by a curse that he put on it and that anyone who lives there is in danger of going mad, and anyone who tries to demolish it is in danger of dying. In the past, two contractors decided to demolish it, 
But on the day of the planned demolition, they suddenly died. One died from a heart attack, and the other was killed in a traffic accident in Athens. I don't have any personal experience with this house, but I don't think I want any. About 10 years ago, my mom, two sisters, and I, and another small family that we were friends with, took a short trip to Northumberland. It's not too far from Alnwick Castle, where the first and second Harry Potter films were shot. My dad and the father of the other family had to work, so it was just our two moms and us seven children, aged between five and 15 years old. Because the other family was quite wealthy and we were not, they paid for the accommodation, which turned out to be an old country house built in the late 1700s, Newton Hall. It has since been stylishly refurbished into a wedding venue, but was then an eerie and isolated shadow of its 19th century preoccupants. I remember us all being shuffled through dark wood paneled passages into a large staircase lined with old portraits. We joked about it being like Hogwarts, the portraits as grim inhabitants with their eyes alive and moving, following us as we climbed the stairs. What was first a joke soon became a genuine concern in the following couple of days. As a side note, I'm still amazed at how we had the whole place to ourselves, me being young then and not fully appreciating what the cost must have been to rent it out. My mom still claims it was because there were no more holiday rentals available in the area during summer, implying that this grand hall was a sort of last resort, but I don't think so. Anyway, in addition to the creepy paintings, there was a huge Native American style totem pole with its garish peeling paint and beady eyes glaring from multiple heads. This stood watch on the landing of the second floor. In a so-called playroom were various animal heads mounted on the walls and in the tall corridors on the ground floor were benches, their legs fashioned from a brutal mesh of deer antlers. It was the benches that were the first cause for alarm. On the first morning, upon waking up, we noticed that one or two of these benches had moved a few inches from their proper placement at the wall's edge. However, this strange but subtle event was not given any thought, at least until the next morning when it happened again. I remember distinctly that the blame was put to the eldest of the seven children, Michael, who had a sort of mischievous manner about him, but he denied it. This physical disturbance in the already extremely scary house was enough to make us sleep in pairs. I remember that my older sister and I were taking turns sleeping on the side of the bed that faced the wall, rather than be exposed to anything that might come in the night. Only one other thing happened that seemed poignant enough for me to remember now. Three of the girls developed some kind of rash while we stayed at the hall. The doctor diagnosed it as empedigo, an infectious skin rash which explains the coincidence. However, the cause still remains completely ambiguous and was never discovered. I don't know if it was a natural infection or something more sinister. Either way, the home was the scene of one of the creepiest things I've ever experienced, before or since, and I genuinely hope to not experience anything like that again. Every town has its own creepy stories and urban legends. My small Midwest town had the Salem House. The story was that in the 1800s, a Civil War veteran and his family lived there. One night, he just snapped and killed his entire family before hanging himself in the barn. People who visited always talked about getting cold chills, seeing shadowy figures, having car troubles. The list goes on and on. My friends and I, being big into the paranormal, decided to check it out one night. I knew it was a creepy area of town, but I don't think I could have ever prepared myself for what happened that night. The whole road that is home to the Salem house is pretty creepy. It's in the middle of the country and very dark. About halfway down the road, the whole area becomes surrounded by woods. The night we visited, as soon as we got to the wooded area, 
I was overcome by fear. I tried to convince my friends to turn around and go back, but they told me that we were already too far along and I couldn't chicken out now. Soon after driving out of the wooded area of the road, we turned onto a long dirt driveway, the driveway to the Salem house. My boyfriend, Kyle, stayed in the car with me while Haley, Mike, and Lily went out to explore the barn. Kyle and I sat in silence for a bit and just watched them head out. Once they disappeared into the barn, I got that overwhelming fear again. This time it came with a sharp pain though, as if somebody was scratching my back very hard. Kyle asked me what was wrong and I told him what was happening. He lifted up the back of my shirt and told me that there was nothing there. Moments later, I hear the loud scream of Haley as she, Lily, and Mike come running back to the car as if they were being chased. We start the car and just before pulling away, several handprints of different sizes created smudges on the windshield. We stayed silent the entire way home. I finally told them all about how I felt like I was getting scratched, and to my surprise, this time when they checked, my back was covered in scratches. Although this was about three years ago, we never really bring up our experiences at the Salem house, though I have asked several times what spooked my friends so badly. They never would answer me, and thinking about it now, I think that's for the best. I grew up in southern Idaho, and I moved to Eugene, Oregon around age 20. We moved into our newly built home in the countryside at the start of the millennium, literally months after my grandma on my mom's side, who I call Nana. I was about eight or nine at the time, and I lived there until I was 17 when my dad kicked me out of the house. After that, I went and lived with my grandparents about five miles away, whose house was also haunted. They too had built their own home. To put things into perspective for some things that happened, our house was set five miles from any town in the middle of fields, with only a few houses about a half mile away. One of those houses was my cousin's. My uncle had built his family's house there, and my dad was really close to him, part of why we built there. It too had some weird things that happened that my cousins and I experienced. The first thing that was odd happened when we were moving our stuff from my dad's parents, the grandparents that I later lived with, into our new home. We lived in their basement, but it was a one-story house. I'm obsessed with Star Wars and had little ships that I played with as a kid. My favorite one was a TIE fighter. I was playing with it one day while the movers and my parents packed and moved things. At one point, I set it on a chair in my parents' room while I was alone downstairs. I ran out of the room, turned the corner, ran up the stairs, realized that I had left it on the chair, and immediately ran back. When I got there, it was gone. I had only been gone about ten seconds, if that, and no one had gone by me at any point. It was a small, narrow basement, so I would have had to have passed anybody who went to move it. I looked everywhere and even emptied the entire room, but I never found it. The setting of our house was a two-story, three-bedroom, two-and-a-half bath with an unfinished basement. My room sat directly above the garage, my parents' room above the living room, and the house was surrounded by one-and-a-half acres of lawn and about three acres of woods on one side, with fields on the other. My cousin's house sat between the fields and the forest, with a path leading between our houses. Growing up in our new home, we had some weird things happen every now and then that we all experienced at one point or another. Lights would turn on by themselves. We had security cameras and caught that several times. All of us would often hear the garage door open, a car drive in, and the garage door close. Then we would hear the door to the house open and close often when somebody was gone. Sometimes only one of us would hear that. Other times, two of us in different rooms would hear it. My parents were very rarely home, so it was always pretty much impossible that somebody was in the garage. I like to joke that I was an only child raised by five cats. 
My dad would often hear loud music with a strong bass line when home alone. He would come out of the room thinking it was me playing music, and sometimes the stereo would be playing music, and other times it wouldn't, but every time he was home alone. When I was around 12 or 13, I used to spend the night in our guest bedroom that we had set up as an exercise room for fun and watch movies all night. That ended one night when I woke up sometime in the night to the TV turning off and on rapidly, even though it didn't have a remote. I immediately ran to my parents' bedroom and I barely slept that night. Later that year, I went to a summer camp at a martial arts studio with just a few friends. We played hide and seek, but got freaked out after two different TVs started rapidly turning on and off on their own even while we held the remote to both of them, with the batteries taken out. Since our basement was unfinished, we stored things down there. My dad is a slight bit of a hoarder, and had kept a lot of his art from art school downstairs. I admittedly went through boxes downstairs often, still looking for that Star Wars ship for years, but I never did find it. One time, my mom and I went to visit her dad in California. When we came back, my dad scolded me for taking all of his art out downstairs. I told him that I hadn't touched his art at all and actually didn't know that he had art down there, which was true at the time, as it was really buried under a lot of stuff. He said he'd gone down one night to find a lot of his paintings, drawings, and even a sculpture laying on top of boxes around one of the unfinished rooms, as though somebody had been looking at them. Even creepier was that while one sculpture was laying on boxes, Another, mind you, these were heavy plaster sculptures, was smashed in two on the floor. The downstairs always had a weird vibe, and after that, if you stood at the top of the stairs, it felt like you were being watched from the bottom. We had a few weird things that would happen outside our house, too. Since we had a massive lawn, we had a big sprinkler system that could run off the canal for the farms, or off of our well water. One summer, our pump was sabotaged at the standpipe by the canal. At the time, we thought it was a farm's kids playing a prank, and we just switched over to well water. A few nights later, though, we went outside for some reason, and we heard splashing water, almost like a geyser, coming from out of the dark. My dad went to investigate and found the test tap for our well full open, which was hard to do. We got it shut off, but for some reason our well pump seemed to be still running, so we needed to shut it off via a valve box in the ground. When we opened it, it was completely filled with dirt, and we had to dig it out. We asked around, but never figured out what happened. My cousin's house, like I said, was about a half a mile away, and I would often play with them. They said that they would hear screaming from their basement on occasion, and often heard footsteps coming up from the basement when no one was down there. On a couple of occasions, I would be at their house and see what looked exactly like a red laser pointer on the wall, as though someone far away was pointing it through the window, but then it would go up the stairs which was far above the window. Later, they moved out of the state, and it sat empty for a number of years. I would still wander around their house on occasion, and several times I saw this laser pointer. Mind you, like I said, we were out in the middle of fields and forest, with the next closest house at least a mile away. At night, lights in their house would be on randomly, and then off the next day or night. Growing up, we'd often visit my grandpa in Eugene, Oregon. He'd built his house as well, but it was a massive house that looked and smelled old, We'd stay on the second story in the bedrooms my mom, her sister, and brothers used to live in. I stayed in a small bedroom that had a walk-in closet with its own locking door. Weird, too, because it was locked on the bedroom side, and even had a latch for a padlock in addition. On occasion, I would wake up to find the door open, and then go back to sleep, and then it would be closed in the morning. Often, I had nightmares in that room, and would run to sleep in my parents' room. That stopped, though, because I would then have very vivid night terrors about their closet and wake up screaming. After that, I just put up with the weird walk-in closet in the other bedroom. I'm pretty sure my grandpa's house was haunted because my grandma was an avid antique collector for the entire time she was alive. 
A lot of stuff gave off weird vibes. My dad says that he often felt a cat jump into the bed, even after the cat died in that house. Lots of people have heard footsteps and felt cold spots throughout the house, and sometimes you can hear whispering somewhere in the house, but never pinpoint where. The weirdest thing that ever happened to me, though, was right before my dad kicked me out of the house. Keep in mind, I get really dehydrated super easily, and I can easily drink at least a gallon of water a day. It's always been that way, too. I don't know why. One night, I had a dream that was actually very pleasant. At one point, though, I became extremely thirsty in the dream. I kept looking for something to drink, but I couldn't find anything. Then this really kind, beautiful lady showed up and offered me some Skittles. I know that sounds really dumb, but I really liked Skittles at the time. I started eating them, thinking that it somehow might quench my thirst. But I was still just so thirsty. Seeing this, the lady seemed concerned, so she kept giving me Skittles, and I would take them and eat them while just standing there smiling. She would give me more. This went on for a bit, but then I realized my hand was hitting something in real life, which started to wake me up. I woke up with my hand hitting the wall because it was reaching off to the side of the bed for the Skittles and hitting the wall instead. When I realized this, I looked up involuntarily, and standing there smiling down at me with a white glow was the same lady. I just sat there for a moment, shocked, and then I bolted out of the room ran downstairs and drank some orange juice, and when I came back, she was gone. Over the years, I have felt bad for running out of the room, since it seems like she genuinely wanted to help, and she didn't seem malevolent at all. She looked to be maybe in her late 30s or 40s. I never saw her again, either. There were lots of little things, like stuff moving around and hearing it move at night. I would think it was my cats, but then I would find all of them asleep downstairs. Lights we thought we'd turned off when we left the house would be on once again when we returned, and doors would be opened that we thought we had closed. One cat that I truly considered mine and was close to had some strange occurrences around my parents. He would constantly try to get into my parents' bedroom where one of our cats took up permanent residence the entirety of her life. All of our doors were round knobs, and my parents would lock their door at night. My dad has OCD and checks all of the doors and windows every night, so there's no way that a door isn't locked after he checks it. He'd often come back multiple times, too, and find them unlocked again even when my mom and I were both out of town. Anyway, my dad would often wake up in the middle of the night to see the door open, and my cat standing there as though he'd opened the locked, round knob door handle. It happened more than once, too. I never figured that out. My cat would also turn on faucets and flush toilets randomly. He was really smart. My cat died earlier this year, at the old age of about 20. On the night he died, I was asleep and felt a cat jump into my bed. I'm now living in Southern California, no pets, just a girlfriend that lives with me, and immediately come and cuddle up familiarly next to me. I even felt the warmth and was very happy. After a bit, it faded away and I came to my senses. I called my dad and said, he didn't die, did he? My dad said he had died just a few hours earlier. It hasn't just been houses that I've had stuff happen in either. On two separate occasions in two different apartments in two different states, I've been asleep and had an experience that I can only describe as attempted demonic possession. I grew up in an overly religious family, Mormons to be specific, but was never welcomed there. And I was often bullied for being the weird kid for, of all things, liking Star Wars and video games. Welcome to Farmtown USA, I guess. Around age 14, though, I stopped going to church, really, and became a staunch atheist. Around age 19 after college, I was still living in southern Idaho in my own apartment. One night, I woke up sweating, unable to get my body to move, but with my limbs shaking and flailing rapidly, almost inhumanly. It was extremely dark, and I couldn't open my eyes, but a slight slit before they'd close really tightly again. While all of this was happening, 
All hope and happiness seemed to drain, and I felt like I just wanted to die. Even being an atheist, I started to pray like when I was a kid. Within moments of starting to pray, everything went back to normal, and I was able to open my eyes. I let out a gasp like I hadn't breathed for minutes, and was sweating profusely. I got up and watched funny Netflix shows for the rest of the night. I experienced the same thing, but even more forcefully again years later. But this time in Eugene, Oregon. Once again I started praying, and again it receded after a few minutes. It's been five years since then, and it was shortly after that that my current girlfriend moved in with me. The last one I remember was at a work friend's house when I was 18. I'd gone over to fix her computer and was removing some viruses when I noticed that she was just standing at the door to her garage, staring intently at the door at the back of her garage. I asked her what she was looking at, and she told me that sometimes she gets weirded out by the door at the back of the garage. I went to look, and the moment I saw it, I felt like my spine had a current of electricity running down it. Having grown up with weird stuff in my house, I decided to investigate. The closer I got, the more intense the feeling. Standing in the frame of the door, it felt surreal. Almost like I was standing in some sort of otherworldly portal. Then, the moment I stepped onto the other side of the door frame, everything returned to normal and felt boring. I looked back through at my friend watching me, feeling kind of bored like nothing had really happened. The moment I stepped back through, though, the feeling of electricity flowing through me returned until I left the garage. These are all the experiences I can remember. I don't know if all of these houses are haunted, or my family's haunted, or I'm haunted, but what I do know, or at least what I think is interesting, is that everybody in my family built their own homes, yet they were all haunted. Maybe one of those things, or several of those things, followed me. I don't know, but these are my experiences. I have had several paranormal experiences. Many of them took place in a townhouse that I lived in with my mother, brother, and her roommates shortly before going into foster care. There are so many things that took place at this house, but I'll try to summarize some of them here. I can't ask you to believe me. I know that everything I say here probably sounds like a load of crap. It's too unreal. I probably wouldn't believe it either. But it did happen to me. It took a long time to convince my parents that this was happening. But then it started happening to them. And now we all know what's really there. I swear on my life that every single word of this is exactly the truth as I remember it. I will never forget this house and our time in it, as it was a very pivotal time period in my life. Everything that I had thought life would be like came there to die. This would be the house where my parents would split up, my mother would pick up a meth addiction, which would later be the reason that we were given to foster care, and where I would develop insomnia due to the multiple paranormal events that would soon begin to take place. I had just turned 10 years old when we moved into this house. It was November of 2003. I remember there being a frost on the ground, but no snow yet. It was dark by the time we finished moving, and our parents told my brother and I to go upstairs and start unpacking our rooms, and that they would order pizza. My brother and I went upstairs to see our rooms, and I could see that my parents had given me the bigger room, and with Travis being the younger one, he got the smaller room. I remember going to my room to unpack, and I don't exactly remember what made me decide to do this, but something must have shook me, because I remember deciding that night that I didn't want the bigger room. I told my parents I wanted the smaller room. And although they were confused, they agreed to let us switch. So I went upstairs and we moved our stuff to the opposite rooms. A little while later, my brother and I went downstairs for dinner and we explored the rest of the house. In this house, there were three levels. The main floor, which had a kitchen, dining room, living room, 
half bath and pantry, as well as a deck. Upstairs, which had three rooms, an office, a linen closet, and a full bathroom. And a basement, which had three open rooms and a utility closet. Despite sounding like a pretty big house, it was actually pretty small, outdated, and not in very good condition. We even had a mouse infestation at one point. Anyway, the basement is where we explored after dinner. Our dad went down first, saying that he wanted to show us something creepy. So we followed. And we went down these really creaky old wooden steps. The kind that are open so you can see behind them, if you know what I mean. When we got downstairs, my dad turned on the light in the first room, and we saw that it was mostly concrete, except for the ceiling, which was wood, as the main floor was above us. There were two rooms off of this room. If you were standing on the stairs looking into this first main room, you would see a second room north of it, and a third room east of it. In the first room, however, there was a rope hanging from the ceiling, hung over one of the beams, and there was some questionable staining on the floor that also splattered up the side of the west wall. My dad told us, someone died down here, and so we should never come down there, otherwise we would see a ghost. My brother and I laughed because our dad was the type that would use things like the boogeyman and woozies to keep us from getting out of bed at night. So, I think we both figured he was just trying to scare us from going into the basement. In all honesty, to this day, I still have no explanation as to whether or not the claim that someone died down there was true, or what that mysterious stain was. But, after you learn about everything that happened in Unit 53, you can decide for yourself. Fast forward a bit, because I have no recollection of the time between then and this next segment. It was Easter of 2004. My grandma had driven into our town for a yearly visit that she would do every Easter. During her stay, I had asked her to sleep in my room. She slept one night in my room and one night with my brothers. I remember her saying that I should have taken the bigger room because I had much more stuff than my brother and thus making my smaller room seem more uncomfortable for sleepovers. I figured she had a good point, and obviously whatever creepy feelings I got on the first night didn't mean anything. After all, it had been months and everything was fine. So I can't recall how soon after she left, but I did end up moving into that bigger room. And that's when things really kicked in. So by this time, after living in this townhouse complex for a while, my brother had made some friends. I, being the antisocial child, stayed inside doing my own thing most of the time. So one afternoon, my brother was playing outside with his friends. My mother was sleeping in her room. And I was doing a paint by number of a cat. At this point, my dad had already left us and my mom was on drugs, so she was most likely sleeping after a long night of partying. I really loved doing paint by numbers, so it was kind of a relaxing afternoon for me. As I was doing my thing, the closet door behind me made a quick, loud bang noise. This wasn't new for me. It happened frequently at night and would wake me from a sound sleep. When I would tell my mother about it, she would tell me it was just the house settling. So, this time when the closet banged, I thought nothing of it and continued painting. A moment or two passed, maybe less than a minute, and it happened again. But this time, I heard the closet door also slowly slide open. Remembering it now gives me chills. I can still feel the air catch in my lungs as I reminisce of hearing the metal door slide against the metal frame. At this point, I was really reluctant to turn around. I remember trying to convince myself that I was just hearing things, but I turned around anyway, and lo and behold, my closet door was slid open about five inches. I stared at it for a few seconds and forcefully decided that it was nothing. It was probably already open. I'm probably just hearing things. 
You ever swear you see something move and you find every logical explanation to write it off? I turned back around and picked up my brush to paint again. At that point, I kid you not, a child's voice spoke to me and said, Do you want to play a trick? I remember every hair on my body standing up and feeling completely paralyzed. I didn't scream like you see in the movies, I just simply sat there like I'd been petrified. Finally, I got the courage to stand and I ran right into my mother's room. She was sleeping and I was trembling, tears streaming down my face trying to wake her up. I don't know if you've ever tried to wake someone up who's sleeping off a drug hangover, but it's really difficult. Finally, she woke up enough to ask me what was going on. And I remember saying to her, Mom, there's a kid in my room. Please wake up. It's asking me to play tricks. She mumbled that it was just my brother. I pleaded with her, No, Mom, he's outside playing with his friends. But she wasn't listening. And by the time I finished my sentence, she'd passed out again. I was crying so hard. I had never been this scared in my entire life. I peeked out of my mom's door frame and looked down the hallway into my room and I couldn't see anything. I don't know how long I stood there before I booked it down the hall, down the stairs, and ran outside. I ran into the backyard and found my brother. I was crying while telling him what had just happened. He told me that he didn't believe me, that I was just trying to scare him. But then he told me he had a surprise for me. This surprise was a girl my age. Her name was Sarah. And we ended up being the very best of friends. She came over and asked me why I was crying, but I was too embarrassed to tell her because I didn't want another person to tell me I was crazy. So I shook it off and spent the rest of the afternoon playing with her. Sarah and her brothers would end up finding out that my house was haunted, though. Later on, after a particularly scary event in my basement, they would refuse to ever come over to my house anymore. When Sarah and her brother were called to go in for dinner, my brother and I made our way back to our house too, and I started to feel really afraid again. I really didn't want to go into the house. My brother, feeling brave, probably because he didn't believe me at the time, told me to wait outside and he would go in and look around. I waited, and eventually he came back out and told me that he'd checked everywhere and that everything was fine. Little did he know that everything would not be fine. And little did I know that all of this was just the beginning. The house that I grew up in and my parents' denial of its haunting is what got me into the paranormal. So many things happened as I was growing up that for the first years of my life that I can remember, I just thought it was normal. Before I get into the activity, I should probably provide some backstory. My father told my mom long before they bought the house that something demonic was attached to him. He said one day while driving, he looked into the rear view mirror and saw what he could only describe as a demon sitting in the car with him. He won't describe what he saw, but he told her that at the time he felt he'd always been running from it. She firmly believes that he brought this entity into our house and that she and I were both targets of it. Growing up, even my friends knew that my house was haunted. Numerous people I had over would witness doors opening and closing, and every single one of them would feel immensely uncomfortable in the basement. I remember that my former best friend and I would tell my parents about a skeleton that lived in the basement. They would play this off as our imagination until they also started to become victims to whatever lived in our home. My mom regularly experienced sleep paralysis, which in and of itself can be debunked, but not when coupled with the almost absurd amount of poltergeist activity and my parents' accounts of what would happen to me in that house. Not long after her first night of sleep paralysis, the alarm clock she kept by her bed flew off the nightstand and slammed into the wall. I remember hearing a woman screaming at the bottom of our stairs one night, and neither of my parents heard it. 
I was fully awake, and to this day I get chills thinking about it. Once I was sitting next to an unplugged fan, and it turned on full blast. I would later learn as an adult that an old man had died in my parents' bedroom, which was a hot spot for this type of activity. Hearing footsteps upstairs while my friends and I were in the basement became so real and routine that we called the police at least twice, believing the house was being robbed. I saw an apparition of a little girl and a cat sitting at my kitchen table one day. I don't know how, but I somehow became instantly aware that the cat's name was Moonbeam. From that day forward, I regularly felt the cat jump up on the bed and rest at my feet. I would always feel at peace during these occurrences. Once, while I was home alone, I felt a sharp sting as though I had been shot with a paintball, and one of my dog's bouncy balls bounced away from me. Something had actually thrown it full speed toward my head. Later that same night, I was watching TV, and it turned to white static, and then a big black X was across the screen. I still believe it's possible that this was a cable glitch of some kind, but I've never experienced it before or since. At this time, my parents had refused to believe me for my own protection. In reality, they were fully aware and were having their own experiences, but they didn't want to scare me. In protest, I set up my webcam to take pictures every few seconds while I went to school. While nobody was home, it captured a large red human-shaped figure standing in the center of my room, facing the camera. Even then, they refused to acknowledge it, but to this day they remember that incident. I remember waking up in the middle of the night, suddenly hyper aware that someone was about to enter my bedroom. I would feel all the hair on my body stand on end, and I would hide under the covers until I felt this presence leave. This became a regular occurrence as I got older. As I became a teen and really started finding all of this fascinating, I bought ghost hunting equipment and started using an old version of today's ghost box. Clear as day in the basement, I heard a deep voice call me by my first and last name. I later caught an EVP in my bedroom of two female voices talking about me as if they were wondering if I could hear them. I had indeed heard these voices before, but I couldn't place them. A lot of this probably sounds too intense to be true, and that's okay. But after reading some experiences, I thought I wanted to share mine. I still actively ghost hunt, and now I live very far from the house in which I grew up, but I will never forget it. A couple of years ago, I was working at a job with somebody who told me, pretty much from the point that I met her, that she was psychic. Now, I'm a believer in the paranormal, in psychics, in energy, all that jazz. It wasn't a stretch for me to believe that she might be telling the truth, but I can assure you now that I very much believe she's the real deal. When the activity started, it was just one very small thing. I had a little arctic fox plushie that I kept on my bed. I would come home to find it being dead center on my bed. It was only ever this one plushie, always right in the middle of my bed. I have a dog, and even though she had never moved any of my plushies around before, I kind of shrugged it off and decided that it was probably her moving it each day while I was at work. For days in a row I would come home to this little fox just sitting there. I'd move it back to its proper spot every day, only to find it in the middle of the bed yet again when I came home from work the next evening. It was weird, but again. I had just shrugged it off as my dog doing these things. The next thing was a bit weirder. I would have vivid dreams, or at least I think they were dreams, where I would be laying in bed in the dark, and suddenly I would feel spiders crawling on my exposed skin. Anything over my blanket would have the sensation of spiders running across it. I would jump out of bed fully awake at that point and turn my light on to investigate. 
I never found a single spider or bug anywhere. The third thing I experienced was the very last thing I could try to explain away. I was laying in bed one night, kind of drifting off as I listened to a horror narrator on YouTube, something I had accredited to what I saw. I was laying on my back, facing the ceiling and the top of my headboard. My headboard is incredibly high. I have one of those bed dresser headboard combo things. It's hard to explain, but basically my headboard is a tall dresser with cabinets and drawers surrounding my actual mattress. And the part above my bed is this alcove with mirrors and two built-in lights that sit inside of it, with the top of the headboard slash dresser thing being what the lights were fixed into. Anyway, I had a light on the headboard turned on, so as I was blinking in and out of sleep while listening to these stories, I opened my eyes only to see a small black shadow quickly duck behind the ridge of the top of my headboard. I blinked a few times, but I didn't see the shadow again. However, I passed it off by telling myself that it was probably just my imagination from being so tired and listening to scary stories. I turned off my light and went to sleep. The fourth and final experience leading up to the end of this story is the one that made me stop denying that something was definitely happening. One night, I was doing my routine of listening to scary stories and relaxing in bed, and I went to plug in my cell phone. The place where I plug in my phone is right next to where I used to keep my chunky rubber bracelets, you know, the ones you would get from Hot Topic or something. So I go to plug in my phone, and as I turn over to put the charger in the outlet, I see, not a foot in front of my face, one of my rubber bracelets move at least an inch to the right, directly in front of me. It didn't roll, it slid across the wooden surface. I sat straight up, surprised. I knew what I saw. There was no explaining that away. I just kind of sat there for a few minutes in a what-the-hell kind of shock, and eventually I plugged in my phone and went to bed. At this point in the story, I should tell you that I not once mentioned these experiences to anybody. Not my family, not my boyfriend, not my co-workers, nobody. This is important, because the next day after I saw that bracelet move, I went into work. As I sat down at the break room table, only one other person was in the room at the time. You guessed it. It was my psychic co-worker. The moment my butt hit the chair, she casually asks me, So what's going on in your room? Stunned, I took a moment to compose myself, and then explained, I thought there was something, but I, I wasn't sure. She nodded. Oh yeah, you have a trickster in your room. It probably got in through your mirrors. I was shocked, because to my knowledge, she'd never seen my bedroom. She never even saw pictures that I can remember. There's a chance looking back that I may have showed her a picture of my Halloween setup in my room before, but I honestly can't remember, and I don't think I did. Either way, her words shocked me. I asked her what she thought I should do about it, and she told me to sage my room, especially the mirrors, and to tell it to leave. When I went home that night, I did just that. I actually grow sage in my backyard, and I make bundles to smudge my house on occasion, so getting my hands on some sage was not an issue. I went around my room, smudging my closet, the whole room, and the mirrors, ending at the window that I had open on the far side of my bedroom. As soon as I got to the window to finish my smudging, the whole freaking thing burst into flame. I had to immediately put the smudge stick out, because it just freaking ignited the second I got to the window. Immediately I texted my coworker and told her what happened. She explained that the sage bursting into flames was the entity leaving, a final trick, as it went away. I closed the window and put the sage away, and that was the end of that. 
I never had anything like what had occurred in the weeks prior happen again. But I have to say, after the whole thing was said and done, I got curious and I looked up tricksters. And what came up kind of cemented that this was, in fact, very real for me. One of the ones listed was a spider trickster, and another was a fox. I'm not sure which one it was, but considering it kept moving my fox plushie, I figure maybe that's why. I just thought I would share this experience and see if anybody else has had any experiences with the tricksters. I come from the county where Ireland's most haunted house, Loftus Hall, is located. If you want to know the history of Loftus Hall and the original story to it, I'm sure you'll find it on Google. People that have visited all have their own stories of experiences at the house, and I'm going to share with you some of my experiences that I've had over the years. I lived about 30 minutes drive away from here, so it was a destination that we visited a lot over the years. I remember the first time I visited the grounds of the house. I was maybe five or six years old and was visiting it with my uncle. As we drove up the long lane leading to the house, I remember looking at all of the windows and getting a shiver as we approached. We parked up and got out of the car. I stood and stared at the house as we walked around the grounds. We walked around to the side of it where, at the time, there were apple trees. The apples were red and juicy. We picked some and put them in a bag to bring home with us. When we got home, we got the apples out of the bag, and every single apple had a rotten part on one side. I mean a big, green, gooey lump on all of them, and they'd been perfectly fine when we picked them. Another time when I was around 14, I'd gone to Loftus Hall with my friend and his mom. There's a nearby lighthouse that's open for people to visit, and we visited there first. When we got to the house, there were a few people around, and there was a young American family there, a mom, a dad, and two girls aged around five and nine. The two girls were running around and playing on the grounds of the house when they ran up to their parents laughing. The nine-year-old said, Mommy, Mommy, Anne wants to show us something. Can we go to her room? Now, this may seem like normal childhood behavior, except Anne is the name of the girl in the original haunting story of Loftus Hall. If you research it, you'll find out everything about the history of the house, including Anne. I must also mention that the actual house was not open to guests to go in and out as they pleased at this time. You had to book a tour, and there were only three to four tours a day. When I was 16, that was my first time going into the house. We booked a tour on Halloween night. There were some ghost hunters who did an overnight stay. They did it every Halloween and a certain number of guests could stay there with them for the night. We arrived and went in, and we set up our sleeping bags while the ghost hunter crew set up their equipment. We took the tour of the house at night in groups of five. The tour guide led us around. We visited each room with the guide giving a story to each of the rooms. We got to a room called the tapestry room. This is the most famous and apparently the most haunted room in the building. It's said that Anne was locked in this room and that she died in the room as she stared out the window, waiting for some mysterious stranger to return. Again, the details of this story are online. She was locked in here and sat with her knees to her chin and when she died, her body couldn't be straightened. Anyway, we entered this room and it was freezing. One of the guests in our group, and I don't know if they were paid actors or what, but they collapsed and went into a fit, arms and legs flailing everywhere. An ambulance was called and he was sent to the hospital, which makes me think he wasn't an actor. I don't know why they would go to that length. Apparently it happens often that people go into that room, collapse, and then have seizures. 
The house is situated on a cliff with the sea in the background. About four years ago, we went for a drive down there on a foggy, cloudy evening. We were looking out to sea and we saw the outline of a ship. It looked like something out of Pirates of the Caribbean, but it floated through the fog and then vanished. There have been hundreds of encounters regarding this house that are noted everywhere on the internet. Everyone has their own stories of visiting from feeling queasy in certain parts of the house to seeing full-on apparitions in the windows, to meeting people while on tours that nobody else who was on the same tour remembers. There is also a hole in the ceiling that goes through the roof, and this is where the devil or demon flew through to escape from the house, according to legend. Over the centuries, the hole has been repaired multiple times, but each time it's repaired, it lasts only a few days, and the hole will come again in the exact same place. Eventually, they stopped fixing it.